Disclaimer. Please check your playback settings. Ensure you are listening to this podcast at normal speed. Unless you want us to sound drunk. Then play at half speed. Thank you. Marine biologist. He's the only one that's going to succeed and get out. And those, Josh and I kind don't... of tore into him a little bit. We kind of killed his confidence. So he's probably going to be a meth head in about six months. Yeah, he'll. he's going to do the graduation, but he already accepted a job at Walmart. Mm-hmm. But he... He was, he was my meal ticket. You can't, what? You no. can't do this to me. No. Yeah, no. well, now, now you'll have more time to edit. So the Virgin Islands, the blue water and dolphins. Why would you do this? I'm gonna. I mean, I might be smoking another meatloaf. That's good, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, and your new credit card has already been canceled by the uh, vendor. So we'll see you on Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the fire pit. I... Yeah. I am recording this by the way. I noticed. Masters of the Universe Super Saturday Super Power Hour! Tune into the Fire Pit Podcast on the last Saturday of the month and join Dan, Tom, and Josh as they watch movies based on some of the greatest 80s Saturday morning cartoons ever! Yo Joe with G.I. Joe Retaliation! Yo Joe! Transform and roll out with the Transformers! Transform and roll out! Jam out with Jam and the Holograms. Then take on Skeletor with Masters of the Universe. It's Marshmallow Cereal and all your childhood memories. And it's only at the Fire Pit. Who needs school when weekends rule? Good morning, bots and listeners, and welcome to a special bonus episode of The Fire Pit. I'm podcaster Barbie, real name Josh, and we have a special, experimental, hope it works, special, did I mention special, commentary episode. So now, to tell us about what we're commenting on, here's Barbie. Hi, Barbie! Josh, we're supposed to be Ken. I know, that's what makes it funnier. It's not funnier. It, oh my God, I, write these, I write these things for a reason. Anyways... <laughs> I write these things for a reason. And I ignore them for a reason. Stick oh. to the scripts. <laughs> no, it's, it's okay. We're gonna, one take, Josh, is what we're getting today. <laughs> Thank you, Josh. Dan, or podcaster Ken Barbie. here. Whatever. <laughs> Today's special commentary episode is our commercial break for this journey. The movie we're watching, or maybe have already watched, depending on when we record this, never really had a proper Saturday morning cartoon show like the other uh, movies we've watched. But, like the movies on this journey, it is based on a long-standing toy line. Uh, so we are watching 2023's Barbie. So now to give us a quick rundown, I'll send things over to Tom. Thank you, Dan. Tom here, or podcast editor Ken. Arby. As mentioned, we're watching Barbie, starring Margot Robbie, Ryan Gosling, and directed by Greta Gerwig, who also wrote this, based on the long-running toy line from Mattel. The movie, not the toy line, was released July 21st, 2023 in the good old US of A. It had a budget of around 128 to 145 million, give or take a dream house, and a box office of a measly 1.446 billion US dollars. It sits at 88% critic score on Rotten Tomato with an 83% audience score and an IMDb of 6.8 out of 10. So, so far, (laughs) the highest rated and highest box officing movie we've seen on this journey so far. And it's technically not even part of the journey. (laughs) It's Barbie. 
<laughs> it's Barbie. Enough said. But who wants to learn some production about Barbie? Not it. Not it. Well, it's a good thing I'm production Ken, <laughs> and I'm about to tell you about Barbie. Tagline, she's everything, he's just Ken. Summary, Barbie and Ken are having the time of their lives in the colorful and seemingly perfect world of Barbie land. However, when they get a chance to go to the real world, aka LA, so depending on your definition of real world, they soon discover the joys and perils of living among humans. As noted in Dan's well-written rundown, Barbie is based off the multi-billion dollar Mattel toy line of the same name, where malformed giraffe women, who are also somehow impossible standards of beauty, are dressed up in designer outfits and lavish accessories, and live in dream houses and drive dream cars, all sold separately, in the matriarchal world of Barbie Land. In Barbie Land, everyone is a Barbie! Unless you're a Ken, or one of the offshoot gimmick character Mattel's come up with over the years. Everything is plastic and pink and absolutely pretty, and every Barbie is defined by their careers, but still has the same plastic personality as every other Barbie. Imagine the Stepford Wives, only everyone's okay with it. Then one morning, our main character, Generic Barbie, or the Basic B for short, wakes up to find herself thinking not Barbie thoughts and not being the most Barbie. Being told that a Barbie's self is tied to her child in the real world, don't ask me how that works, there's some implications, she sets out to set herself right, and Ken's with her because he has nothing better to do. Wacky hijinks and lessons about the patriarchy ensue. Barbie was produced by Heyday Films, the same company responsible for the Harry Potter films, in conjunction with Mattel Films, the film division of the toy company that owns Barbie, and the production company Lucky Chap Entertainment, which is owned by one Margot Robbie. Coincidentally, this movie stars the Academy Award-nominated Australian actress Margot Robbie as the titular Basic B, whose resemblance to the blonde toy literally come to life is second only to the other blonde icon she's famous for, Harley Quinn of the now-deceased DC Universe films, such as Suicide Squad and Birds of Prey. May it rest. Co-starring with Robbie is the similarly blonde, similarly iconic, and similarly Academy-nominated Ryan Gosling, playing her accessory boyfriend slash boyfriend accessory Ken. Much like Robbie, Gosling is about as close as you can get to his toy counterpart without just putting him in a Ken doll costume. He's also been Hollywood's go-to for playing broken pretty boys and sometimes sociopaths in mid-budget dramas such as Drive, where he plays a stuntman on a roaring rampage of revenge, and, most recently, The Fall Guy, where he plays a stuntman on a roaring rampage of revenge. The man's got range, guys. And leading this lavish spectacle is writer-slash-director Greta Gerwig, who co-wrote this film with none other than Noah Baumbach, neither of whom are known for comedies, but both have been Academy Award nominees, Noah Baumbach best known for writing Marriage Story, as well as The Squid and the Whale, which fuck that movie, but he's also co-wrote The Life Aquatic and The Fantastic Mr. Fox with Wes Anderson, so it's not all bad. While Greta Gerwig has brought us such gut busters as Little Women and Lady Bird, Neither of which you could consider comedies, unless you consider a 17-year-old jumping out of a moving car as funny, which I... <laughs> <laughs> she jumped out of the car! <laughs> it was the best thing ever. Got him. I couldn't believe she did that. So I rewound it so she could do it again. <laughs> on top of the A-list cast of creators, Mattel also spared no expense on the soundtrack of this movie, doing the thing that Gem and the Holograms should have done and brought in an all the female musicians, such as Dua Lipa, Tame Impala, Billie Eilish, just to name a few. And by God did it pay off. 
Having languished in production hell since the mid-1980s, the movie was released in July of 2023 following a literally atomic marketing campaign, which probably played a major role in the box office and critical success of this film. On top of all of that, which I'm sure Josh and Dan will go into, this film uh, would go on to be nominated for a pantheon of awards, winning the Academy for Best Original Song, the Billboard Music Awards for Top Soundtrack, and the American Film Institute's Top 10 Film of the Year, among others. So in summary, Barbie is the IP cash grab slash nostalgia film created by and starring an Academy level cast with Grammy award winning musicians and treated like Star Wars for girls. So having given you all of the production, Dan, do you have any trivia about this movie? Well, I've got a little bit that I go over while we're watching the film, but uh, the beach battle scene where uh, the executive played by um, Will Ferrell says, are there any weapons here? And the other exec that or assistant or whatever is following around going, uh, of course not. So yeah, there were not allowed to be any weapons in that fight because Mattel has a longstanding rule that Barbie nor Ken can ever have any kind of weapon with them as an accessory. But then Josh pointed out that they were using bow and arrow in the scene. And that was allowed because it was a bow and arrow that had suction cup arrows. And it was a toy accessory to one of, I don't remember the name now, but you remember when, well, I don't know if you guys remember because we didn't, we were, we were boys. So we didn't play with Barbies, but Ken and Barbie had like little sisters and little brothers or little nieces and nephews, like Skipper, yeah, yeah, yeah. Skipper and whatever. Well, one of Ken's little brothers or little nephews, came with a cowboy and Indian set. So he had little suction cup arrows. So culturally sensitive Barbie. Yeah. And so um, that was where that bow and arrow with the suction cups came from was one of those particular Ken's. But other than that, like they're not allowed to have any other kind of like weapons, like no knives, guns, axes, nothing like that. And they're pretty strict about it. They're pretty strict about it. That's why, like, the Star Trek Barbies, the Ken and Barbie in the Star Trek set didn't come with phasers because those are weapons. There's been other Kens and Barbies made that have been made to mimic other movie characters that omit any particular weapons they may have. So, mm-hmm. which is kind of funny. I was like, like, I like how Barbie's allowed to have a wine glass as an accessory, but she's not allowed to have a gun. <laughs> you know, so, so it's okay. It's okay. Getting schnockered on the weekends is fine, but, you know. Hey, Barbie's had a long day being Barbie. Barbie yeah. needs to take the edge off. Um, another thing I forgot to mention or talk about, but uh, I thought was hilarious, was in the movie when they're in Barbie world, the Barbie dolls or the Barbies and the Kens in the Barbie land are specifically shot and made 23% larger than anything in Barbie land. And the reason why they're made that way is because it's supposed to mimic the awkward and usually disproportionate scale that real Barbies and Kens <laughs> have to the activity sets that they are usually accompanied with. Hmm. That is why Barbie sometimes appears to be too large for things like her car or why does she keeps hitting the ceiling when she's taking a shower and stuff like that. Like she's not the right proportion to her dream house, which is why like she keeps hitting the ceiling when she's in the shower or her feet hang over the bed when she's laying in the bed. Hmm. Um, why she's her and Ken are too big for the car, things like that. And that was specifically made that way because a lot of the play sets are not the right scale. <laughs> that was a nice touch. Oh, nice. Um, according to Ryan Gosling, who did play Ken in the movie, uh, he accepted the role of Ken because he saw his daughter's Ken doll lying face down in the mud next to us. <laughs> and so he took a he took a shot of the doll on his phone. He took a picture of the phone and then called Greta Gerwig and saying, I'll be Ken. His story must be told. <laughs> I got that. I got that one from IMDb. I thought that was hilarious. I'm like, yeah, it's like his story must be told. So justice for Ken. <laughs> Hashtag. I mean, pound Ken. I mean, pound justice for Ken. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, just all kinds of stuff, especially if you are someone who either collects Barbies or played with Barbies as a child. And, and they really go through the, like, the whole history. Like my my mom watched this movie and she's of the first generation that got to play with Barbies. Like she was the right age when those toys, those dolls first came out. 
So like mom got a lot of the the stuff from it, like especially the early costumes and some of the Barbie set hair designs mm-hmm, from mm-hmm. from the 1960s and the 1970s and stuff like that. Like they didn't just feature Barbie stuff from the modern stuff. They featured Barbie going all the way back to the 1960s, like some mm-hmm, of the hairstyles, mm-hmm. some of the swimsuits, some of their accessories. I thought it was a nice touch because, you know, they, they kind of do the same thing with our movies. You know, like uh, some of the Transformers feature, pay homage to the designs of Transformers from the 1980s or when we uh, were watch, or watching the show or collecting the toys. So, you know, it was kind of cool that the, the girls' toys got to have that treatment too. Like, you know, let them have a little, uh, well, like, hey, I remember playing with that kind of moments, you know, so. Or I like, thought, you know, Bruce Willis being the original G.I. Joe. It's like, ah! got that reference that sort of yeah, a little girl could point at the screen or, or uh, not a little girl anymore a young woman or, or even an older woman can point at the screen and say i remember playing with that you know and that's really cool i thought that was a nice touch that that's definitely like something that kind of warms my heart a little bit so mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um yeah but um and then i have other trivia as we're watching the movie um just all kinds of stuff actually i could talk for hours on the trivia for this film and how they the attention to detail they put in this movie Mm -hmm, um mm -hmm. at the risk of rambling i will just send things over to josh because box office numbers are his thing and this thing did uh this movie did gangbusters at the box office yes josh how how did it do in the box office it did uh yes um so (laughs) barbie released august 7th 2014 made a box office release of 1.9 million dollars Barbie and the Secret Door. This is the wrong one. <laughs> Swerve. <laughs> All right, Bottom. hang on, hang on, hang on. August 12th, 2016, Barbie Starlight Adventure. God damn it. Hang on, hang on. Okay, here it is. Barbie and Rock and Roll. No. Barbie, that was... 2020s, Barbie, Big City, Big Dreams. No. Fuck. Where's the new one? Ah, here it is. 2022, Barbie, Mermaid Power. <laughs> is that the one with John you're getting, Cena? You're getting closer. Getting, you're getting There closer. it is, Barbie. <laughs> 2023, Barbie. <laughs> there we go. Talk about padding your segment. Wow. I got to keep up with you, Tom. Um, <laughs> released July 19th, 2023. It had a domestic opening of $162 million with a total domestic gross of $636 million and an international gross of $809 million, totaling in a worldwide box office of $1.445 billion, with a B, yen dollars. Jesus. That's a GPD of a small country. Holy shit. To say that Barbie did well is an understatement. <laughs> and to also say that Barbie premiered number one its opening weekend would be an obvious, you know, mm-hmm. it's mm-hmm. the free box in uh, the Fire Pit podcast that says a Star Trek reference, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so would you guys care to take a whack at the number two movie in the box office on that opening weekend? Well, oh, jeez. For, mm-hmm. for Bar- yeah, the opening weekend yeah. of Barbie? Yeah. Was, see, hmm, what, I'm trying to remember what oh. else came at the same time that Barbie oh. came out, Nigel. It's, I'm... Yeah, yeah. I'm... Yeah. Going to blame. Oh, I'm, I remember it getting atomic heat at the time, but I'm yeah, it I just, <clears throat> I'm just. Well, it also has that guy who played Scarecrow in the Batman Begins movie. Uh, That's like, right. I, yeah, I had, uh, um, that uh, one guy. Oh, and the dude that played Iron Man. The dude that played Iron Man. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's um, and that one guy from the Boys. Um, and the Martian. Uh, the guy from the Martian was in it too. Oh. Geez. Um, was it an Avengers movie? Because it feels like it's one of those Avengers movies. Because he got Indiana all Indiana of- Jones and the Dial of Destiny. I'm kidding. No, it was off the camera. <laughs> I was going to say, you're so full of shit. <laughs> Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny wouldn't have been the number two movie that weekend, even if it was the only other movie that came out. <laughs> <laughs> they would have just yes. put Barbie at one and two. Pretty much, pretty much. But Barbie, yes, it was released. It was number one on its opening weekend. Um, I, why did I close that window? Why did you close that window, Josh? I don't know. 
I was trying to find the other stuff. So Barbie premiered number one, pulling in 162 million, and at number two was Oppenheimer, pulling in 82 million dollars. Number three was The Sound of Freedom, pulling in 19 million. Number four was Mission Impossible: Dead Reckoning Part One, pulling in 19.3 million, and at number five. Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny pulling in $6.6 million. Was it really out the same weekend as those? Jesus. It was. It wow. was on its fourth week of release. I'm At least they were smart enough to not try to compete. Give them that much. Dude, wow. well, it wouldn't have mattered anyways. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've, I never heard of those other films that were in the top five either. I don't think anybody has. So... That was number one for that weekend. Do you guys want to take a guess at what the number two movie was? Because obviously it was Barbie. For the year 2023? For the entire year of 2023? For the entire year 2023, the number one movie movie was Barbie. I was reading Barbie and saying movie and it came out booby. Uh-huh, whatever. Now we know what window he closed. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um. Shh. So wait, Barbie, Barbie was the number. Barbie was the number one movie of 2023, right? Yep, and it pulled in 636 million. Like I said, the number two movie that year pulled in 574 million. This is domestic. Oh, well, I know what it is. I know what it is. Thompson, it's, do you care to take a guess? It's got to be Oppenheimer. I no, mean, no, really I not. No, I know what the number two movie was last year. Nigel, do you wish to tell him? It was Mario. It was the oh. Super Mario Brothers movie. Oh, I forgot all about that movie. Actually, no. I only remembered from looking up my Barbie trivia last week. Like, I just remember, like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Because one of the things I saw was, the one of the trivia was Barbie was the number one movie of 2023. But I'm like, well, I'll leave that one for Josh, obviously. So, yeah, I just, but yeah. it was number two was Super Mario Brothers. Number three was Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. Number four was Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. And number five was Oppenheimer. So the first and the fifth highest grossing movies were... Basically kind of like new titles, not sequels or remakes. I yeah. guess you could also count Super Mario Brothers movie, but I don't know. There hasn't been a Barbie or an Oppenheimer movie. So that's... Did Oppenheimer have a global release? That, I'm, I'm curious because I figure a lot of those numbers for everyone else was global numbers. I that don't... was all domestic. Oh, do- oh, wow. Never mind then. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, Doppenheimer did good domestically. I mean, worldwide it made almost a billion, but it didn't quite go over it. Okay, okay. Wow. That's I'm impressed with Oppenheimer, yeah. all things considered. I mean, yeah. yeah, honestly, a historical drama being the number five grossing film of the year, that's impressive in and of itself. Like that's Oh just, yeah, that's Chris Nolan you know, for you though. Yeah. But uh, since we're doing a special, unique episode tonight, you mm-hmm. probably downloaded this episode and be like, what the fuck? This is a two and a half hour long episode. Yeah. What so- is going on here? Yeah, Josh, do you care to explain that? Let us uh, <laughs> let us explain this. Um, tonight's episode is a very special episode. And what we're going to try to do, probably fail at, is let you have the remainder of this episode. We're still going to give some expectations slash final thoughts. But starting at, I don't know, whatever point Tom wants to let us know on after it's edited in. We are looking at starting the watch section around the 59 minute mark here. The 59 minute mark. Give or take, maybe a couple seconds, a minute or two. 59 minutes. If you think you can make it that long. Godspeed. (laughs) It will be a commentary for the movie Barbie. The entire movie. Yes. So, in theory, you can turn on our podcast and watch Barbie. I'm going to go ahead and put a little asterisk. There is a few scene times when Plex screwed up and we had to, uh, it had to pause or it looped for a split second. Right. Or yeah. Tom's connection sucked. So My connection? My connection? Yeah, was it you or was it Dan who kept fucking up the beginning? I, it was me who kept fucking up at the beginning. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Sorry, I've been drunk like four times this week. Um, Slow week. We do try to, you know, do a time hack. Here and there when we're watching it, telling you it, how far into the movie we are. And hopefully by context cues, you can figure it out or just not listen to this episode. Yeah, if you're in the car, you, if we're usually your car listening experience, if you just want to hear us 
jammer with no context yeah, keep listening otherwise try to yeah, if you're or at home try to watch yeah. the movie and just experience what we experience every yeah. time we record these episodes yeah this is for some of the feedback we give people like they they want a longer comment section they want a longer watch section and this is our way of saying be careful what you wish for <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> because after this, you'll be begging us to go back to those 10 to 15 minute watch sections. That's why this is a special release, which isn't going to be a very unless, of course, this turns out to be one of the most popular things we've ever released. And then we become a full commentary podcast, which could be weird. Let us know in the comments. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah seriously. Give us. Yeah. Let us know what you think. Um, just something to try. Josh actually threw it on us last second, but honestly, it was like, "Hey, that's not a bad idea." So yeah, I mean, it's like we're going to watch this movie anyway. So let's let's do it. And as an editor, I just have to push a button and release this episode now. No more of the cutting and pasting and putting in the audio. I just, I just got to put it out there. This is yeah. this is like my vacation. We still got to edit the 30, 30 minute section of this part, yeah. Tom. Who says I'm editing any of this? No, it's just, it's going, this is no, all it's, raw, guys. <laughs> we're going in bareback. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on to your butts. Here, you uh, take this. Uh, you'll know when to bite down on it. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a taste of this, this stuff you get to listen to us. We're probably going to be canceled after this episode. 99 episodes. It was a good run, guys. <laughs> this was, however... All seriousness aside, or joking aside. <laughs> no, all seriousness aside. aside. Yeah, all joking aside for a minute, and then we'll go right back to no no seriousness. This did help us uh, experiment uh, with a little bit because we found out that rest in peace, Sink Lounge is no longer a thing. Uh, so we had to uh, work on a new way for us to all be able to watch movies together. So mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. we do not, yeah, we don't record this podcast all in the same room. Sometimes we're not even in the same state. So. <laughs> Um, yeah, so yeah, this, this did help us like, oh God, Sink Lounge is gone. So yeah, rest in peace, Sink Lounge. R.I.P. Rip. It got us through to 2024 though. Blessing yeah. for that. Yeah. But no, so yeah, like I said, we had a good time watching the movie. We've already watched it. We're recording this after. So mm-hmm. like I said, we'll go ahead and bleed on into our, uh, final thoughts, I guess. Well, I want to know what your guys' expectations for the movie when it was first coming out. Because you both have daughters. And I'm sure your daughters have both played with Barbie and everything else. And no matter what, one of them was going to drag you to see this movie. So I'm actually curious. Honestly, I remember seeing the screenshots of Ken and Barbie, you know, Margot Robbie and uh, Ryan Gosling like a year or so before the movie was released. I'm like, they're making a Barbie movie? That's going to suck. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. like oh honestly it seemed like a ridiculous concept and i'm just like why thinking it was like furthering the wave of toys to movies that uh mm-hmm, mm-hmm. in my opinion has been kind of bombing lately like most yeah. of the modern like toys to movie movies mm-hmm. are just i don't feel like they're as good as they have been well have they ever been good i mean well the the initial nostalgia ride that was fun but i've been nostalgia out you know it's like cape fatigue but for nostalgia Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so barbie was never something big for me growing up like yeah i didn't have any sisters my cousins had barbies i never played with them my daughter wasn't really big into barbies so now if they came out with the shopkins movie oh my god she would be all over that don't give hollywood any ideas josh it's slated for 2027 anywho son of a bitch I, I didn't have super high expectations. I think we eventually did go see it in mo- in the theaters, but it was like on its third or fourth week of release, especially after all the rave reviews. Like I didn't even get a chance to watch Oppenheimer until it was already out on video. Overall, I liked the movie. I thought that some of the uh, scenes was very well done mm-hmm. in terms of, you know, trying to broadcast the message without beating you over the head with it. Mm-hmm. But then again, there were scenes that beat you over the head with the message but it was at least nice and kissed you afterwards. <laughs> your bruise, little your nose is just a little bloody. It's like now, what are we you. gonna say? I fell down some stairs. You fell down some stairs. <laughs> um, Jeez, Jesus, Josh, tell us how you really feel about Barbie. No, no, it's. <laughs> I say that joking, but uh, no, the I felt like in terms of the message, it was. A solid message. I felt like, like honestly, I walked out of that theater being like, "Well, damn, I wasn't expecting it to be that good of a movie." Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. But I was very pleasantly surprised. Mm-hmm. Um, all seriousness aside, uh, 
But uh, yeah, I really don't have a lot to go in on that. But I I did enjoy the movie. I thought that the uh, I thought it was a good, strong, feminine led movie, female led movie that had a good message. Angel. Well, I think expectations. I had almost no expectations going into this film or when hearing of production. Um, I also, me personally, I had no real excitement for it. I didn't grow up playing with Barbies. I didn't have sisters, so <clears throat> I didn't have any like real like excitement for it. Like I would, you know, or like I did. I, I wouldn't say I've been excited about a Transformers film in a while, but mm. um, like I did with the very first Transformers, like 2007 or something like that. But um, mm-hmm. I don't know. I, I was curious about the, the cast attached to it. I do like Ryan Gosling. I think Margot Robbie's a good actress, you know, so I was curious about some of the casting on it. And then um, I didn't see it uh, the opening weekend it came out, but I went to go see it the second weekend it was out because I was hearing all the buzz about it. Also, I was in Iowa and there's not much else to do. So I went to the movie. (laughs) So, yeah, I went to go see it. And, uh, yeah, it pleasantly surprised me. You know, it was it was Mm -hmm. a fun movie. It was funny. I I think it's I think it's hilarious in parts. I think it has a good message. I think the people who got mad at this film didn't get the message (laughs) like. They, they just got angry because people on YouTube or, or other social media told them to get angry. So they just yep. got angry mm-hmm. because a lot of the comments I see on this film are like, tell, I hate the meme, but tell me you haven't watched the movie without telling me you haven't watched the movie. Like, mm-hmm. um, but I liked it. I, you know, like I said, I had no expectations going in. I really didn't. I thought I, I'm kind of with Josh on this one. I have serious franchise fatigue, I guess, since maybe not so much Cape fatigue, but I'm just kind of done with superhero films for a while and toy films. I haven't really seen any of them in theaters in a while. Like, I don't know. What was the last Transformers film? Rise of the Beasts. Rise of the Beasts. I didn't see that in theaters. I watched it on Amazon when it came out on Amazon, but I haven't seen it in theaters. I haven't seen a Marvel movie in the theaters since Spider-Man. Yeah. Uh, no way home. That's not even a yeah. Tech. Well, okay. No way home is uh, that's a Sony, but yeah, I get what you mean. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. No, it's yeah, it's distributed by Sony, but it's it's yeah. MCU. No, it's an MCU. I haven't seen. I was getting needlessly pedantic there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I haven't seen an MCU film in the theaters. The last movie I did go see in the theaters was Black Adam, and that wasn't good. So I'm like, I'm just done with superhero films. So mm-hmm, I just mm-hmm. haven't yeah, seen the- anything in a while. The next superhero film we'll probably watch in theaters will be Superman. Yeah, because I'm like kind of done with them right now. You know, I'm just kind of yeah. like done. Not just superheroes, like franchise films in total. Like I haven't seen a Transformers movie in a while. Um, I haven't seen a Fast and the Furious movie in the theaters in a while. I haven't seen a Mission Impossible movie. And like, it just feels like everything now is all sequels and franchises. So, mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. and I know Barbie's not a sequel to anything, but it is a franchise. You know, like Barbie's a huge thing. So, yeah, as Josh mentioned, there's been a few air quotes barbie films before this barbie came out mattel's been milking this for a bit yeah those I mean, are a different type yeah barbie you know like for the longest time barbie really was the only real girl's toy mm-hmm. so like when i was growing up the toy sections like the boys section of the toy like the gi joe had to share kind of some shelf space with transformers and he-man mm-hmm. and other toys and then like the other aisle we used to call it when I was growing up anyways, we called it the Barbie aisle. Like that was the aisle where all the Barbies were. Yeah. Yeah. And she had usually, she had her, like her whole, she had like a whole wall to herself, yep. you know? Mm-hmm. And like, obviously maybe some of our audience doesn't remember these stores, but I remember Toys R Us. Like Toys R Us had a Barbie section. Like yep. there was a whole section of the store dedicated to just Barbie. There was mm-hmm. one aisle that was all the figures or dolls. There was one, yeah, we call them action figures. They call G.I. Joe started that one. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. It's like, oh, no boy's going to play with a doll. They're called action figures. Give them a gun and some camo. But <laughs> Hoorah! Um, yeah. So there was one section or the one aisle of the Barbie section was like all the dolls. And then the next aisle was like all her play sets, you know, the Barbie mm-hmm. Corvette and the dream house and the summer home. And, you know, the, the, I don't know, the Barbie international space station or whatever, like all the Barbie play sets were in one section. So like, you know, she's a big deal. Like Barbie's a million billion dollar franchise, you know? So mm-hmm. it was a big deal. I had no expectations, but I ended up really liking the film. What about you, Tom? Um, I remember the initial campaigns for Barbie, just everything's like, this is the ex Barbie. He's just Ken. I was like, okay, okay. I see what they're picking up and putting down. This is going to be irreverent. It's not going to be, it's not going to take its health too seriously. I having sisters, um, and having, uh, been quite immersed with all the Barbie culture growing up. 
and the horrors that are done to Barbie dolls, both by <laughs> all siblings. Yes. Um, Josh, Josh has some confessions in the watch section. So I, I wasn't, you know, like ecstatic for it. I wasn't the target audience, but I was figuring just looking at the cast, Margot Robbie's fantastic. Ryan Gosling, just hilarious when he's not taking himself seriously. The guy knows when to ham it up. They both do, but both great actors. Just everything that looked about it, it's like, oh, this could be fun. It kind of had that same vibe as those like mid to late 90s Gen X nostalgia films like Brady Bunch or um, Beverly Hillbillies where the Gen X guy, it was their nostalgia, but they also didn't worship it. They didn't like hold it on some pedestal. They, they had fun poking fun at the shit they loved. Yep. Yeah. Like kind of um Austin Powers. Like, yeah, this stuff was goofy, wasn't it, guys? It doesn't fit in with the hardcore real world of the 1990s. Honestly, I think, I think not to get too off topic, but I think that's the genius of the Brady Bunch movie is that the rest of the world, the rest of the world is the 90s and the Brady Bunch still very much live in the 70s. Yeah. <laughs> still, you know. But, and I was but, expecting a lot of that with Barbie too. Yeah. Um, I was, yeah, I had de- totally, I thought it was going to be a completely different movie. Same, same. I wasn't really going to catch it on opening weekend. I was going to like, wait a minute just to see what happens. Because, you know, Jim and the Holograms, other films like those. Josh, you pointed out f- female focused films or female nostalgia films don't really do well in the uh, in the uh, box office. Not exactly a lot of love given to them. <laughs> Then there was the bombshell that came out on the social medias, Oppenheimer and Barbie at the same time, which at first were like, what are you thinking, Oppenheimer? I got vibrations of, you know, the Dark Knight when they were trying to do Mamma Mia at the same time as that. I was like, oh, this is going to go so Mm -hmm. bad. It's going to be, oh, Nolan's going to know what it felt like to be Mamma Mia when his movie was released. And then, no, the American box office was all like, oh, you can support these two movies both being a success. Yeah, for some for whatever reason, we all just memed on it. It's like Barbenheimer. My city was big into it. Everyone was just on board with Barbenheimer. We had events for that opening. The bar in my movie theater had Barbenheimer themed drinks. People came dressed as Barbie Oppenheimer for the opening weekend. So of course I did the Barbenheimer. I saw Oppenheimer and then I saw Barbie. Yeah, didn't you see Barbie like three times its opening weekend? I did. (laughs) Everyone took me to see Barbie. Barbie. I saw Oppenheimer once and Barbie three times. I want to say he called me in tears being like, Josh, Josh, I don't want to go see Barbie again, but I have to. I kind of was that way. I'm not going to lie. I was fairly disappointed in Barbie. It was colorful. It was fun. I mean, the stuff in the Barbie land was all right. Ken wound up stealing the show for me because his stuff accidentally had a message um, but yeah, the, the whole hitting on the head about like everything else, which I get the whole point of the film was brand rehabilitation for Barbie and it had to make it seem relevant. You know, the whole like, oh, Barbie's not anti-feminism, guys. Barbie's totally pro-feminism. I mean, look at her. Look at all the things she can do. And we need her now, most of all, because the patriarchy. Am I right, girls? So that was fun, but it was slightly disappointing because I was expecting a little more irreverence from it. Um, much like those 90s pseudo-nostalgia, but didn't take itself seriously films like the Brady Bunch. I was hoping for that. But the fact that everything was just well put together, they didn't have CG, the sets were all realistic, and it was still a fun film 80% of the time. That was all right. Not as good as I wanted it to be. But then again, I saw it three times. So by the third time, it's like... I just, I, I'm. There's just too much pink now, guys. I can, can I, can I have a vegetable, please? Thank you. <laughs> it's like the first time he watched it. It like it, it's him sitting in the uh, movie theater with like popcorn, dressed as Tom. And then it's like first watching, and then it cuts to the next panel. It's third watch, and he's all in pink, wearing Barbie paraphernalia, and just like all up and down pink and everything, looking like a nice shaved Ken doll. And he's just like, well then. 
you joke about that, Josh. You joke about that. I took the pictures, Tom. I know. <laughs> that said, my most enjoyment, especially by the third time, my girlfriend and all of my lady friends just hearing their nostalgia about that, especially in regards to the freaky Barbie and just hearing all their stories of all the terrors they put their Barbies. Through. Yeah, my my mom thought the weird Barbie. Yeah, weird Barbie. Pretty funny. Yeah, yeah, weird Barbie was pretty funny because it's like. Yeah, it was a Barbie that was played with wrong or played with too hard or, you know, something like <laughs> yeah, that. She goes, it was she that was like, Barbie. Yeah, because she said she says everyone had one. Everyone had that Barbie that either your little sister got a hold of or or uh, you left outside and got hit with the lawnmower or something like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like everyone had one. So, But you couldn't uh, bear throwing away, yeah. so they kept it and they kept playing with it and then... Over time, it just yeah. Same yeah. with like I guess apparently like I, I again I did not own any Barbies, so I'm, I wasn't aware of this. But like says. but like they say. Well, I also didn't have any sisters, so like I, there were no Barbies in my house. At least except for my mom had a few, but they were collectors. Like she had collections, and they were behind a case. And obviously, I'm a boy; I didn't play with them. But I didn't know that Barbie didn't have enough points of articulation to properly do the splits, which is why <laughs> the Barbie doing the splits is hilarious. Because that means they broke it. That means they broke it. Because it means the, the they broke the hip joint on the Barbie to make it do the splits. So, yeah. How many headless Barbies are still out there <laughs> wandering the world? Right. You know, or how many Barbies with fucked up haircuts are there out there and stuff like that, you know? You At know. least 70% of all Barbies created. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, apparently also from what my mom was telling me is that uh, the outfits in the 60s when the show first or not show when the uh, toys first came out, they were like super expensive. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So mom, one of the reasons why she's to this day, she's such a good seamstress and she can sew a lot of stuff. is because she learned how to sew her own outfits for. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah, because the out because they were they were she said they were really expensive. She said actually the the original concept of the toy was you bought one doll and then you just bought the outfits. They didn't have like you know Doctor Barbie and Astronaut Barbie and and Lawyer Barbie and and whatever. Mom said no, you just you bought an outfit that put her in a doctor coat or a nurse outfit, or you bought an outfit that put her in a suit or something like that. You bought outfits for her mm -hmm. to uh, to make her in those different groups. You didn't buy like Malibu Beach Barbie. You just bought her a swimsuit. You know like you, yeah yeah. It's kind like G.I. Joe back in those days. You didn't have like um, Shipwreck or Snake Eyes or anything. You just had the G.I. Joe and then you bought the scuba stuff to make him a scuba G.I. Joe. Yeah, or, yeah, or you, uh, you bought him the Army Fatigues and the M16 to make him an Army soldier. You may have bought the, yep. you know, you bought an all-black outfit to make him a Navy SEAL and all that stuff. So it's like... And then Hollywood, real, or not Hollywood, the toy industry has bro Mattel realized it's like, you know what, maybe we don't let them change all their clothes and we're going to release 30 different versions of Batman. Yeah, there's there's a Don't lot of that. all around. <laughs> there's a lot of that. Also, I guess when the GI Joe cartoon was being made, it was like one of those things was like, well, we don't want just the same guy changing outfits, so we're gonna make them all smaller figures, and now we're gonna make our money selling multiple figures in multiple playsets and make them as breakable as possible. Yeah, we're gonna put a rubber band in them, and when the rubber band breaks, it basically turns them useless. Yeah. Honestly, that would be a pretty funny gag if they ever did a G.I. Joe movie where either because like G.I. Joe's couldn't do the splits either. So mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. if a G.I. Joe's doing the splits or uh, uh, if a G.I. Joe's like broken in half or something like that, it's like, oh, shit, his O-ring broke. <laughs> See, I kind of mm -hmm. was expecting them to kind of do that with this movie. Like Barbie goes to the real world and Ken kind of like, you know, winds up going through all the other man toys in the Mattel line, like the Rock'em Sock'ems or G.I. Joe or whatever. And just realizing, oh, fuck, no, no. It would have been really hard for Ken to go through a Mattel G.I. Joe line, considering G.I. Joe is owned by Hasbro, who's a competitor of Mattel. Yes. If anything, he would have gone through He-Man. He-Man is owned by Mattel. So actually, it would have been kind of funny to see like Ken see all the different He-Man toys. And that would have been kind of funny. I think yeah. that would have been pretty funny. Mattel, right there, guys, right there. You, you can pay us for this idea. But I actually understand why they didn't. Show, like they do show Mattel's headquarters in the movie, but they didn't show any other Mattel toys. Like mm -hmm. they did not show He-Man or anything like that because that would have taken the focus away from Barbie. This is a girl's movie about girl's toys. So yeah, it's like, yeah, let's yeah. focus on the girl's toys. Yeah. So I'm okay with them not showing him. That would have been a funny bit, but I can, I can see why they'd be like, no, this is a girl's movie. This is based on a girl's toy line that girls played with. I want them to not have to see like, 
oh, of course we got to put the boys' toys in here. We get the you know, so the guys have something to watch when they're in here. Like, yeah. no, no, I watched Ken and I thought that was hilarious. You know, yeah. so and yeah. I'm 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 gonna I'm sorry. I understand. I, I know that a lot of people were upset that Gosling was the only one that got an actor nod for an, an Oscar. But after watching this movie multiple times, he is the best actor in this film. He really is. He really is. Yeah, he is. Yeah. Well, again, like I said, the story accidentally makes the Ken's side of things far more. I'm not going to say relatable, but there's more to it than just, oh, I have weird feet and dark thoughts and I need to fix that. The Ken's kind of. Barbie Land sucks for a Ken. They yeah. Don't yeah. House. Where do they, they stay? They, where do they stay? And Barbie's like, you know, I never thought about that. Huh. And Barbie. then she just goes on about the rest of her, her adventure. Yeah, like because that's what Ken is. In Barbie Land, Ken is no more an accessory than the Barbie Dream House is. Yeah. Hell, the only reason Ken exists is because girls wanted Barbie to have a boyfriend character back in the day. It's like, okay, fine, we'll make a Ken. Yeah, he doesn't matter. Yeah, he's literally an accessory. Yeah, he's talk about that. Yeah, yeah, like like they they treat Ken in Barbie land. They treat Ken no different than a pair of shoes or a dress or Mm -hmm. sunglasses. Like he's an accessory. And then, yeah, and then, yeah, of course, like Ken turns Barbie land into the patriarchy. (laughs) But the message there, but then the message there is that oppressing someone else doesn't make things right. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 Yeah, Just because you're oppressed doesn't give you the right to oppress other people. Like oppression's bad no matter who's doing it. Um, And then there's a, there's an identity message to the movie too. Cause at the end of the movie, when she's like, you know, when Ken's just like, but I love Barbie. That's, that's my sole purpose in life is I love Barbie. And she's like, you have to find an identity. That's not me. Mm -hmm, which mm -hmm. is kind of a nice message too. Like you don't, you need to find your own person instead of latching on for someone else's validation. You know what Mm -hmm. I mean? So be you, I don't know. I thought the movie was, I thought the movie had a couple of really good messages in it. Yeah. Yeah. And Barbie's message too, at the end of the day, she wasn't just, you know, Dr. Barbie or surfer Barbie. She's just like, I'm just me. I'm, I don't even think she was really a Barbie at the end of it. She was just, what was her name when she went to, Barbara. Uh, Barbara. So yeah, she just became Barbara. She also discovered, I don't need to be a Barbie either. The message there was supposed to be that you don't have to be a lawyer, a doctor, the president, an astronaut or something to be considered a successful person. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That was that was her message because she was just like, basically she, her, her whole thing was like, I'm regular Barbie. I'm mm-hmm, just regular mm-hmm. Barbie. I'm not special. Being regular is still special. Yeah. You know, you don't have to be the astronaut or the quarterback. Well, Barbie wouldn't be a quarterback. Ken would be a quarterback. There's probably a quarterback. Ken yeah, you saying somewhere. Barbie can't quarterback? Yeah. Are you saying Barbie can't? <gasps> Josh Dan is saying Barbie can't. No, 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 Dan. Oh. That is unacceptable. Oh, no, Dan. Oh no, 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 no. Dan saying Barbie can't. <sighs> All right. Well, um, I think we need to make a contact and get this episode sponsored by the LFL, the, the Lady Football League. No. Oh. Wait, what? The lingerie football league. What? Uh, that that's not that is that not contradictory to the message of this movie? <laughs> like girl power, women power. You, you said know. Barbie couldn't be a football player, and I have an entire league of women who play football. I'm not saying. I'm saying. Is that what's on this other tab right there? Yes. What? Okay, look, I'm not saying she can't be a football player or a quarterback. I'm just saying there's 32 starting quarterbacks in the NFL and none of them are Barbie. So, you know. Yet. Come Yet. at me. It's fine. You know. Okay, so maybe Barbie can't be a part of the NFL. Isn't she, though? I mean. She can look be. At, look at Taylor NFL Swift. NFL Barbie. NFL Barbie. Taylor Swift, make it happen. Swifties Boy, unite. Way off the rails. We yeah. really did. <laughs> and that's, for, that's it for tonight's show. Yeah, We're going to be right. canceled after this episode anyway, guys. Yeah, this episode, yeah. they're going to watch that watch section and some of the stuff you said is going to get us just forever. Me? Oh, y- yes, you, Josh. Me? You who, future, future true crime podcast focus, <laughs> Josh. That, uh, Josh was auditioning for the role of a Criminal Minds character. <laughs> <laughs> the serial killer of the season. Jeffrey Dahmer listened like, it's fucked up, man. Jesus. Yeah. Get help. <laughs> you need to see somebody about that. You guys are just jealous. 
that I was on fire when we recorded that episode. So my ass, you can kiss it. Jealous or in shock? I'm going to go with the shock. Yes. <laughs> All right. Okay. So I think we've uh, rambled on enough about what we thought we were going to get from this movie and everything else. But before we send you off to hear us watching this film, uh, as a reminder, you can find us on firepitpodcast.com. There you can find links to Spotify, iTunes, Amazon, or wherever fine podcasts are sold, including ours. Our regular episodes are Saturday, um, around early parts of Saturday. I generally do get them on Saturday, it's just not necessarily at the end of the month. It's usually at the beginning of the month, but hopefully this one will come out on that time. But please like and subscribe to whatever medium you choose. We really appreciate it, and it really helps us out. And while you're also doing that, tell people to review our podcast. And by review, I mean give us all the five plus stars and everything else. Don't tell us what you actually think. Just tell us the good stuff about the podcast and, you know, help the fire pit grow. And be sure to check out our Discord channel as well. Uh, link in the episode's description at discord.me forward slash fire pit. Get notifications of new episodes. Uh, even better, we can uh, engage in discussion with fans of the other show. We are getting better about responding about things in there. It's hopefully trying to get a little more active in there. So jo uh, join the Discord, and uh, hopefully we can uh, really build that thing up. And you can uh, email us at curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com. Uh, we have links to our Facebook and our Twitter, still calling it that, at FirePitCCE. Um, all of that is linked in our episode's description, too. Beautiful. And I think I'm just going to shout out all the people who um, have stuck with us through this episode and are sticking with us through this episode. It's an experiment. So preemptive thanks to you guys who would stick this far and make it all the way to the end. I, I think as a reward, you'll get our appreciation. So thank you guys for being the best Barbie you can be. Well, thank you, Tom. You're welcome. Even though you probably should have had to start that shout out there, Josh, but no. uh, don't have any shout outs for tonight, but um, do let us know uh, what you think of the episode. And if you want us to keep doing it or stop doing it entirely, and by it, I mean the podcast, because I have a feeling we're going to be canceled after this episode. Well, one of us is going to be canceled after this episode, Josh. Uh, please, if I if I go down, I'm taking you all down <laughs> with me. None of you are safe. <laughs> Nigel, any shout outs for you? Uh, yeah, I got uh, one particular shout out. You guys are going to be happy to hear about this. I would like to shout out Fire Pit listener Rob, who has been a very loyal listener of the Fire Pit podcast. Uh, he informed me the other day that uh, he and his wife are expecting their first child. <gasps> Yay! Is it going to be a Barbie or a Ken? It's going to be a Barbie. <gasps> oh! Well, congratulations, Rob. Yeah, custom PC Barbie on her way. Yeah, yeah custom PC Barbie. So, yeah, uh, no, uh, he's very excited. Um, it's their first. So um, have fun with that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> thankfully, yeah, Josh and I are a little bit past the newborn stage, but uh, he was he was very excited about it. I told him not to come, for, come to me for any advice. Uh, and he was like, your daughter's a, a, a good girl. You're doing, you seem to be doing things. Okay. And I told him that I've been letting her play mortal Kombat with me since she was 10 years old. And I do the fatalities because I have to teach her that, uh, failure has consequences. I'm, and then he was just like, well, at least you're teaching her something. <laughs> so yeah. every one of our parental, um, story starts with, and to further prove I'm a terrible parent. And then we tell a story. <laughs> As the only one here without kids, I'm not even going to say all the lessons I've taught my nieces and nephews over the years. Also, congratulations to my nephew who's graduating high school this weekend. So, or whenever this comes out. Oh, I would uh, actually, let me, let me backpedal a little bit. I would like to give a shout out to my daughter. She passed her driver's test yesterday. So she now is got her learner's permit and will be on the road. So is dad getting her her own Barbie dream car now? I'm not answering that. 
Barbie <laughs> Tesla. Yeah, yeah. Oh, fuck that noise. <laughs> I'm one of the reasons why Tesla stock's going down because I am not buying a Tesla right now. I think I think Tesla is the reason why Tesla stock is going down. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's uh... well. When you start, you know, you stop mock, start mocking your core. Uh, mm-hmm. That's a that's a discussion for another time. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. So, uh, so yes, congratulations to my daughter. It's going to be terrifying for the next few months. Eh, she'll be fine. She'll wreck the car once or four times, but she'll she'll figure it out. We were all there. <laughs> Congratulations, girl. It should be noted she is as old as our friendship is. So our friendship is now getting a, lear- a learner's permit, guys. Yeah, she was, uh, me and Tom met and started hanging out like six months or so before she was born. Then Dan came along and the uh, the bridge crew was complete. And years later, we all were bored during the pandemic and said, let's let's do a podcast. Let's make a hundred episode podcast and then get canceled. And here we episode, are. Episode 100 will come out whether or not we're canceled by this one or not. Well, you can't spell canceled podcast without podcast. So <laughs> <laughs> very true, Nigel. Very true. But uh, again, please let us know if you like the episode. Um, that's all I've got. So uh, anything else, guys? Um, I don't know, but, um, no, no I don't have anything else. Um, thanks for listening. We are all over the place tonight. So Tom, I... play the music. Welcome back to another dreamy Barbie episode of The Fire Pit. I am, as always, your interspersal host, editor, and escapist fantasy Barbie, Tom! Let's slide down to our dream car and go get some ice cream! Whee! Thanks! Too long to fit around turn! Could somebody get the crowbar again? And the butter! And thank you for sticking around with us here at the Fire Pit. We're one slide turn away from Masters of the Universe, the destination of this Super Saturday Super Power Hour. And of course, what cartoon block would be complete without an ad break? Hence the Barbie episode, because toys and such. We're very clever here at the Fire Pit. And speaking of ad breaks, how about some ads of our own? Boy, those sure looked like things I'd like to spend mine or my parents' money or time on. Wee-hoo! But if you have any ads you'd like us to spend time advertising, or if you have some things you want us to spend time telling people about, or if you want to spend your time letting us know how you spend your time in general, then feel free to email us at curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com. That's curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com. Just be sure to put Fire Pit in the subject line, as well as why you're emailing us. Whether it's to place an ad, make a movie recommendation, correct us on some trivia we might have overlooked, and roll it our way. From there, we'll read it, dress it in a gaudy but stylish sequin dress with matching plastic shoes and one of those purse thingies that's not really a functional purse, but it's a very stylish little plastic purse. Drive it off in a prim late 90s all pink dream car and never respond. In hindsight, pushing it into active traffic maybe wasn't the best call. Those dream cars are not exactly known for maneuverability. But that email again is curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com, capital C, capital C, capital E, capital I, at gmail.com. Now, if I can just get my hip around the bend. Going to wait here for Care Flight to come rescue me. I'll let you get back to the episode. Thank you all for listening, and as always, good luck. <laughs>
Oh god. The butter. Melting into the bone. <sighs> and now to check on the team to see how they're enjoying their movie. We're recording, by the way. Are we just going to watch this now? I say we just do it as a commentary, see how things work out. If, <laughs> it, if we... it works out well, then we can actually load it up as commentary to the movie. If uh, it doesn't, then we just edit. Okay, so welcome to the watch section for those listeners. If this worked, um, <laughs> if you hadn't guessed, we're playing it by ear today. Okay, and as um, your Patreon exclusive members, you have no choice. You're already paid. We've got your money. I don't see the watch together thing. You should have clicked and let it go. We're also going to include all of this. When I click, it says cannot access this item. The server is unreachable. That's on you, bro. See, hey, it, I know it's like, well, you already watched me. If you're going to bitch, then fuck you, Dan. <laughs> yeah, you upset Mattel. Since the beginning of time. Ever existed. Why does it say no access? I don't know. You should have access. Yeah, you should have access. Well, that's you, not necessarily Have you tried true. turning it off and turning it back on again? Yes. What, the girls? Why the are you going to try to murder children? What are we talking about? This little girl is actually Greta Gerwig. Yes. It's her in real this life. This is filmed in real time. Those feet look like plastic, but check this out. This is special. This is the uh, science of special effects. It's actually Margot Robbie. Her feet what? are actually plastic. <laughs> it's not something that she likes to talk about. There was an accident when she was in Australia. It's a whole thing. Yeah. It's actually rather tragic. <laughs> I, no, too, don't. use my kids to break tea sets. <laughs> and other babies. Fun fact, my son, when he was an infant, ate another child. <laughs> like, he was crawling around, walked up to him, opened his mouth, and, like, just like a snake, digested it whole. We left before the parents found out. I think... Oh, look, the movie started. Hey. <laughs> that's not Barbie. That's Harley Quinn. Dan, yeah. did we lose you? I cannot fucking access it at all. Do, do we need to pause this? I think we need we need to pause this. All right. Is this the first movie of a journey? No. All right. Pausing at 310. Oh, now. Oh. Hey, it's, it paused for me. Sweet. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and. Like, yeah, I don't understand why it won't let me access. Cannot access this item. The server is unreachable. Well, it's working for the two of us. Yeah. Sounds like it's a you problem, Dan. Well, it might be. Hang on. Let me try something else. Something else I, usually th works. I shared Barbie with Death Scythe. <laughs> That sounds dirtier than it should be. <laughs> then we're going to access this watch section. Like, why is the movie an hour and a half with the watch section is three hours? <laughs> yeah, if you're listening, you should have paused at three minutes and ten. We told you. We even told you. Or this is going to be the after credits scene that we edited out. Oh, no. No, no, no. We're keeping this all in. I'm not editing this. So any untoward uh, mentions or things that you don't wish to be heard? It fucking sucks for you. Looking at you, Josh. Hey, Josh, what's your thoughts on Palestine? Technical difficulties. 
Nigel, do you still not have access? No, I'm trying to figure out why. Let me go into my <laughs> proof of file. And that did not work. Um, account settings, there we go. Where's my friends at? Why does everything keep changing? Don't they know that it's like they can't change because it annoys us? I tried to tell them, but apparently no one has AOL anymore. Those bastards. I know. Nom, 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 nom. Death scythe. Okay, why... Well, Manage library access. He has access to everything. <laughs> I'm, I'm just imagining Dan over there on his side. Guys, I can't access this. Pounding the escape button. It just, it just won't work. I mean, I don't know why. Guys, I can't watch Barbie today. <laughs> My computer just stopped working. I don't. I don't know what the situation is. <laughs> just, it's. I. It's a mystery. Smashing his keyboard and monitor. Nigel, you still having issues? Yeah, I am. I can't figure. I'm trying to figure out why it's not working, but All I right. can't get a clear answer on anything. I'm gonna try something then. I'm gonna stop the playback. Um, 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 um. Um, play version. How do I watch together? I don't want to shuffle. How do I invite? No, don't play, piece of shit. Where the F is it? Get info, grant access, save file. Guys, if you checked out the Fire Pit's latest watch section, it just bangs. Who said that? <laughs> it's funny, nobody on Discord is saying shit about it, but it's like, even my parents texted me to say that this latest episode was awesome. I even got my parents to watch it, too. <clears throat> they haven't said anything either. Though, of course, it probably got to the part when you told, you know, you said the line about getting rid of us fuckers and uh, part like, and off. <laughs> <laughs> That's like 10 seconds into the, into the skit. That's all we needed, guys. Click. Good episode, though. Very good it was episode. A, it was a good one. All right. Nigel, is it working for you now? Yep, I'm in. Is it playing? Well, you haven't started playing it, so... I did, though. Not playing for me. I'm hearing sound, but I don't see any video. I hit the play button on my oh, side. I got it. Are you watching it? Mm -hmm. are, we, are we seeing all these different Barbies, like the one in the wheelchair? Yeah. I'm, we're going into the real world now on my side. So now Dan, Tom's having issues? Are we? I'm at 331. Mm. I'm at 323. Oh, I've started sooner than you guys, so. We. God damn it, Tom. 330. What? 335. I paused it. I'll wait. Are you not like... I sent a new link out to invite the new play section. Oh my god! Hang on, let Nigel, me... Nigel, what's your time at? Where did you... 342, 343, 45, 46, 47. Let me push a button here. Where, where did you send it? I paused it. it. Open Plex. This is not going to end well for us, guys. So welcome to the fire pit. We're trying something new tonight. Which is why you didn't get our very standard introduction, but it's coming. We're trying something funny. It's okay, going so to be funny, but we're trying something different. 
Okay. And that we're watching the movie while we record the episode. Okay. Uh, 348, 349, 350. 55. 54. I'm going to pause it at four minutes. Exactly. It's paused. Nigel, what's your time hack? We lost Nigel. (laughs) Son of a bitch. (laughs) No, I got it. I I muted myself because I was chewing. Oh, are Um, we at four minutes? All of us at four minutes. Yeah, it says Margot Robbie right on the... Okay, I'm going to press play. Nobody else touch anything else because it's probably going to fuck it up anyway. Play. Hey, what's this button do? Oh, no! All right, is Margot Robbie waving to other Barbie? Yes. She's waving and she's waving to other Barbie. Do do we have a script or are we just going to just talk off the cuff? As we're watching this? Yes. Yeah, I've I've got this is just our standard watch section. Only now everyone hears everything. Yes. What? What? Well, this is you... ideally a commentary episode. Mhm. So and we're commenting on Margot Robbie's feet right now. I mean, good choice on them going with like stunt feet to you know look real. So does that mean that like if they don't shower with real water or anything, are they actually just permanent no bodily functions? Yeah. There is nothing between those legs. Okay. Gross. <laughs> okay, this is completely unrealistic. Those slides were like five times too small for any Barbie to slide down them. Already immersion lost. Tom again with the insight into his childhood. He had sisters. He's the only one of us that did. I know. I'm just saying insight into his childhood. I wasn't talking bad about him, Dan. Oh. God. Yeah, Dan. Why do you have to assume it was such a bad thing? Going back on mute. <laughs> <laughs> now, to those of you listening to the Fire Pit commentary episode of Barbie, this is what it's like watching a movie with the three of us. And they've already deleted their subscriptions. You're going to hear a lot more ums and uhs. Excuse me. But yeah, we do need like an intro or something at some point. Oh, you mean for the watch section? Oh, I figure we'll still do like the episode proper itself after all this. Like, welcome to the fire pit, beepity bop. Um, do our whole thing, what we expected, and having rewatched it, what do we think now? That sort of well, thing. Well, no, you know what I mean by this is a commentary episode, right? Like, if you played this while watching the movie, you would hear us talking. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but I didn't think it would be the whole episode. That's what I'm thinking it would be. We don't have to. You, Let's the audience is just first. loving this. My cons- <laughs> Let's watch this first, continue, and then we'll see what happens after that. That'd be so great if the president actually had to wear a sash like that that said president. I vote for that. Yeah. I feel like some presidents president and former kind of need that to remind them that they are in fact president and then when they don't have the sash they're like where's the sash and it's like because you're not president anymore and then but he I, gets confused and poops himself i'm not naming names a, by the way not you naming don't have names. to that describes both of them i know that's what i'm saying one of them would wear it oh okay yeah i'm good the other one would wake up and be like where's my sash and then More somebody would like, have to tell him and then he would poop himself i feel like one of them would never take it off Ever. I, I think we would know which one that would be. Yes. Ooh, if I, I mean, could both of them would probably poop themselves. Let's just be oh, honest. Absolutely. There'd be, I mean, there would be a, you know, an assigned sash washer for all the poop that they get on the sash. But you'd have to make sure that only one sash is ever, like, made. And it's got to be, like, a like dollar bill level, like, uh, security on it. That, okay, I don't want to be president now. That just sounds vile. You could wash it, Tom. 
Hey! It's Sean Key! Hey! Okay, if we were like in the Barbie universe, um, which one of us would be the main character that we'd call everybody by their name? Or would we all go by Ken? Uh, hmm. I call Chet. No, I want Alan. I want to be Alan. You can be Alan. I'm uh, I'm Michael Sarah. Awesome. What movie did I just watch with him in it? Um, was he a loner <laughs> without any emotions and but like a rebel a without cat? a cause? Yeah. Did he go on any roaring rampages of revenge? God damn it, now I gotta open up IMDb. <laughs> I basically described 90% of his, of his movies. I know, I know. All of it, Ken. Your pants flew off. It's smooth. We all know it now, so stop acting like it's not. That's what he meant about his penis. He's going to give him a beach job. Was this in the movie? Because I'm not remembering it. This was at, this was like 90% of the Ken's whole thing. There's a big climax at the end. They all I'm... climax together. All right, I'm leaving. <laughs> oh, you better not before I beat you off. Dan, I'm going to beat you off hard. Beat you off hard. God you know, I'm not going to beat either of you off, but I will watch it happen. <laughs> I can't hear you because I'm muted. That's how muting works. He's, he's, he's beaching himself off. He's a son of a beach. Damn it. <laughs> Did I beat you to it? <laughs> Stop, Josh. <laughs> Life's a beach. What you gonna say? Dan, where's that mute button again? <laughs> He's quickly trying to... Uh, nope. Un un to mute me and beat you to it. Damn it, I used that one already. Um, Tom's a bitch. Damn it. Audience, this is what I have to edit. Yep. Yeah, the only reason I really wanted to do that tonight is so I can be uncensored. Tom, like, edits so much of me out. Yeah, I'm going to have to, like, mute myself most of this movie. I'm just going to go back to these Cheez-Its. <laughs> I don't remember what I recently watched. Was it one of the new ones, or was it a not new one? I watched, uh, what was that movie he was in? Um, with Russell Crowe, The Nice Guys. That was actually really good. Eh, it was all right. I enjoyed it. It was no 21 Bridges. <laughs> Hi, Barbie. I feel like Barbie Land is, I mean, if I was gay, this would just be paradise for me. Like, I just get to hang out with a bunch of guys with abs and dance? This I mean, but if they don't have, like, holes or anything, are you going to, like, if you drill a hole, is it plastic? <sighs> oh, my God. Well, we saw that one Ken was trying to give, um... You know, Maine can his ice cream, so they got some white stuff to share. You know, I'm just going to stop. <laughs> I do want people to want to listen to this. Oh, my God. We're 13 fucking minutes into this movie. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch. He's so sparkly. 
So a little bit of trivia. The uh, flip was added because by Greta Gerwig because that guy did a flip and Ryan Gosling got kind of a little jealous about it. So they added <laughs> that scene in. <laughs> Excuse me. I love it. Now it's it's frozen for me. It flashed back and said the same thing twice because Dan fucked it up. That's Barbie just, just said, actually, do you think about dying? We're at like 1347 now. That's where I'm at. Yeah, same. Yeah. This is, I'm saying it for the audience, time hack. Yeah. I didn't touch it. The movie literally had a record skip too. Ironic, hmm. isn't it? Don't you think? Nom, nom, nom. Okay, so... Have I ever told you about the tragedy of Darth Plagueis the Wise? Josh, I'm serious. I'm gonna leave. <laughs> <laughs> no, I thought not. It's not a, jo- a story the Jedi would tell you. Thanks for coming to my TED Talk. <laughs> So we could touch beach holes. He's very sure. He drilled a hole in his plastic. Stop it. I mean it. Stop it. (laughs) So in Barbie world, they all are like certain Barbies and certain Kens and they all have a certain role. Is this not the living embodiment of hell? They wake up every day and do the same exact thing and live the same exact life every day. I think you just described capitalism. Yeah. (laughs) Oh my God. This is terrible. Also, what happens to the Kens? I mean, he's leaving, but where does he go? Where do the Kens go at night? They don't have homes. Yeah, there isn't a Ken... They go stand at the beach. They just stand there? Just and wait? All night. Maybe they have closets or something that they go stand in. All the clans are in a closet? <laughs> no, that explains so much now. I mean, what would the little girls do with their Ken dolls? Um... Put women's clothes on them. You're right, Tom. <laughs> no, my sisters usually had their kids walk around naked all the time. Saying- so it is exactly like capitalism. <laughs> Grown men walking around little girls naked. Stop, Josh. Tom, edit that out. Shit. Acting. (laughs) Hey, give her a break. She's Australian. So is this like the food from uh, Hook? Yes. Just believe in it, Peter. I wish we were watching that. But Margot Robbie and the patriarchy. Actually, I do enjoy this movie. I just watched it the other day. (laughs) (laughs) So now Dan can say he's seen this movie three times. Dan, have you seen it more than three times? This will be the third. Okay. Uh, So we're, this will actually be the fourth time for me. Everyone kept wanting to see this movie. Oh, it was always fun when uh, my lady friends would talk about this, because a lot like when we would watch, you know, G.I. Joe and Transformers and have nostalgia with playing with the toys, they would also have the nostalgia with playing with the Barbie. And I gotta tell you, we were a lot nicer to our G.I. Joe than they ever were with their Barbie. Jesus Christ. Well, did you know that the Barbie head could detach and then you could hang it by the hair? And then run around the, and taunt your little cousins with it. But then you like you pop it right back on before their mom shows up and your cousin's like crying in the corner. And you're like, I didn't do anything. See, it's perfectly fine. Josh, is there something you want to tell us? 
No, Tom. Oh, thank God. Hey, Dan, can I call you, you know, on the down low? I need to get something out. No, Josh, you can't. You guys are the best friends. <laughs> <laughs> so I like that she gives Ken all this shit, but she literally has no job. At least her Ken is a beach Ken. She's just, she's basic Barbie. So what Tom is saying is every Barbie should look like her. Yes. Yes, they really should. My friend Jackie has stories that make you crawl. She was an only child, and all she had was Barbie. To vent. Many, I've heard legends say that some women tried to cut their first bangs on a Barbie doll. Seriously, if the you're ever in for a fun time, just Google, like, cutting your own bangs on, like, any kind of social media. I, I can confirm from all my lady friends and my girlfriend, that's true. They've all practiced cutting hair on their Barbies first. And I think my sister Britt had that dog. Hey, 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 Dan, Dan, do you recognize what? that Barbie from your favorite, like, movie that came out in 2016? The one about the ghosts and Buster. Yeah. Did you answer the call, Dan? Or were you afraid of those ghosts? Dan, are you afraid of those ghosts? I'm leaving. <laughs> <laughs> Dan has left the building. Protein Your child's flop. toy. Hey, hey, my Captain America action figure had sex with many a Barbie doll. Just saying. <laughs> so we're unpacking a lot of shit from Josh's childhood in this episode. <laughs> I'm going to go. This is going to be a season one callback to growing up in Kansas. Just, um, Fire Pit audience, go ahead and turn this off and, um, Hopefully we'll be out with Masters of the Universe in a week or two, and uh, this will all blow over. Don't hold this against us as a podcast as a whole. Hold it against Josh as a human being. Some more than others. <clears throat> Dude, if my, like, action figures actually had, like, a uh, conscious, just conscious side... Like there was some kind of symbiosis between the two of you. Yeah, that would be weird. Do you ever see that one comic where like this dude's dog's running around and he comes up to him and then he has a piece of paper in his mouth. So the guy grabs it from the dog's mouth. He reads this weird incantation and then like the dog turns into a person. And be like, oh my God, I've been trapped like a dog for years. Hurry up, say it again. So this way I can stay a human being forever. And then he's just like, I, you've seen things. I don't, and then it go, turns poof back into a dog. I have not. <laughs> that is hysterical. <laughs> basic bitch Barbie. Yeah, again, basic bitch Barbie. That's Kate McKinnon Barbie. We got it. Josh. Lesbian Barbie. Hillary Clinton Barbie. This, I just said that. <laughs> <laughs> I 
<laughs> you know, in the game Portal, you could theoretically suck your own dick. Oh my god, this is why we don't do this! <laughs> okay, I'm immediately voting that this is not a watch section this episode. This should not be the prototype of a commentary <laughs> episode. No. People uh, can watch this or listen to this, but they're going to have to pay for it now. Yeah, yeah. Josh, Josh is proving why dogs have leashes. <laughs> and muzzles. <laughs> So capitalism, right? Capitalism. Margot Robbie is the idea of capitalism. Kate McKinnon is the exercise of capitalism. Practice, the practice of capitalism. Expectation v. reality. There you go. Yeah. Like porn before and after jerking off. (laughs) Dear God, (laughs) John. Ryan Gosling is just the best. He is. He is. Like, this is going to be really sexist to bring it up again, but there's a reason why he got nominated for an Oscar. He really is the best actor in this movie. Did it pause for you guys? Yes. yes it did. It, the movie wanted to hear Dan's hot take about yes, Dan. Ryan Gosling. It's like, is it? Is whoa, Dan whoa, whoa. Finally, is he it's Dan's gonna, turn to have a gay moment. Thing? Yes. No, I just said he's the best actor in this film. There's a reason why he got nominated and no one else did. Also, those abs. Mm -mm -mm. And those dreamy blue eyes. I could pour some imaginary pancake syrup on those waffles. Giggity. I I see you resumed, but I'm still paused. It's still paused for me, too. I got the spinny circle of death. But it's resumed for me. Is it playing? Yeah, it is. Tell us what's happening, Dan. Give us the play-by-play. Barbie's given the whole I'm going to the real world speech thing and Ken's looking at her for longingly. Okay, I I see it's paused now. I love this shirt he's wearing. I think I have that shirt he's wearing. That does not surprise me. I have a lot of Hawaiian shirts. Oh, there it goes. Hey! We're at 25 minutes exactly. Yes. A plane! It's Superman! Speaking of better films, I don't know, it's not out yet, but it will be the greatest film ever about for a week at least after its release, right guys? And then be replaced by the Barbie sequel? Probably. I just hope they fix that Superman costume. The collar is still too high. He's not Captain Picard. Let, I'm let kind of like on the fence about it. Like, cause like I said, that picture was apparently like of him legitimately sitting down and getting ready. So I'm like, most of the time, like the original Spider-Man from civil war costume, mm-hmm, the Spider-Man mm-hmm. costume from civil war apparently was like a lot different, but they completely changed it in post. Yeah. 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 Okay. So hopefully it'll be, tweaked up oh god oh god this thing does not come with seat belts do you think barbie exists in the same universe as who framed roger rabbit huh and if it does do you think that shit that they dip the cartoons in to erase them would work on barbie i wish we could dip you in that shit they dip the cartoons in (laughs) This is the kind of abuse I have to deal with with (laughs) listeners. This this is why I wanted to do a live cut, unedited cut like this, so you could see the kind of shit I have to put up with. Yes. It's all Josh on the receiving end here. I take it long and hard every time we record. Oh, God. 
Hey, did you know that all of this was practical stuff and not CG whatsoever? Let's focus on that. <laughs> like, make me ride the fucking bike. Now you're just going to have a fucking, like, hamburger. Now, Tom, you definitely have what Barbie's wearing. I've seen you wearing it. All except the rollerblades. Yeah. It's I'm hard to find yellow that. rollerblades anymore. Yeah, yeah. But that thong, yep. Yep. Call yep. me. Just imagine Barbie, but with like long brown curly hair and a very thick beard. Give them all some good visuals there. I think Dan's really enjoying their outfits. No, I was really enjoying my steak. <laughs> then then what happened? I ate it. And now I'm sad that it's gone. <laughs> Is this Play of the Pizza Part 2? No. Although that was brilliant. <laughs> that was. It's the disaster. Wait, wait, I need something else. The, um... I don't the... know. I'm just, I'm drawing a blank. The sadness of the steak. There you go. Yeah. <coughs> In your entendre. Yeah. Your mouth opens. <laughs> Wait, shit. No, there is a reason Tom edits this. You are all learning this in real time. <laughs> Tom, edit that out. <laughs> I, I can't. Welcome to the fire pit. <laughs> Did you see that Roku plug? Wait, why would they be arrested? He slapped her butt first. Because yep. of the patriarchy. Dan. Patriarchy, Dan. That's not how it works, but okay. Capitalism. Because that's how real people talk in the real world. I don't know. It's L.A., so I've never been there. So I assume that it's like that. No, this is true, Josh. This is true. We might be conflating the real world with L.A. world. Yeah. Like, they wouldn't speak like that in Ohio. Well, Surprising, you know, nice bit of trivia. There's less plastic in Barbie world than there is in actual L.A. Yeah. That's a fact. <clears throat> Topical humor. And he should have said howdy, sir. Was that Dennis Leary? Yes. Okay. Sure. Mmm. Can't wait to get me a Hummer when I get home. Is that right or right before or after your beach hole job? Beach job. John Travolta in the 70s, the pinnacle of masculinity. That was Stallone. No, the, right before that was Greece. God damn it, Tom. Keep up. Stallone was peak testosterone in the 80s. Also fact. Okay, now all the women in the audience have fields. 
Get nostalgic. I do like, feel like some of the people that got mad about this movie kind of missed the point of the movie. They did. And the point of the movie was? Well, I mean, it's a toy for girls, and the movie was marketed towards girls and women that grew up playing Barbie. It's To me, it's no different than G.I. Joe and Transformers making a movie that was definitely geared towards me, who grew up playing with Transformers. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, they definitely missed the point. Oh, no, no, yeah, yeah. I mean, this whole movie is to make you, one, miss Barbie, and two, want to go buy more Barbie. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's just, like, I feel like a lot of people that got angry about this are the same people that are getting mad that, you know, like, it's the MCU. I'm like, well, yeah, I mean, it is. It sucks now, but, like, yeah. this movie's actually geared towards women this is this is proof that you can make movies based on women-centric franchises and products and if Mm -hmm. you gear it towards that audience they will come out in droves and spend money because this movie made buckets of money oh yeah and also this movie did not suck cough cough gem in the holograms cough cough exactly that's what i was thinking like yeah it was just you know they put a lot of money into it they put a lot of production into it they hired good actors to play the roles. You know, mm-hmm, it's like, mm-hmm. oh, I've got some. Shit. I've got production notes on this. I say after this, we'll do our normal episode, like stuffy stuff. Because I, the difference between this movie's production and Gem and the Hologram production is stark. Well, then just say it. No, I want to do it separate and such. We want to do it separate. But this it's be... the commentary episode, Tom. We want to do this all while it's um, playing. <laughs> fine, 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 fine. So, I mean, you look at the production. I um, mean, you've got, I, 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 with the exception of like the background characters like uh, Michael, Sarah, and all them. Even I think him too. Like. Pretty much everyone that was in charge or starring in this movie was an Academy nominated someone. Greta was Academy nominated director and writer. Um, Baobaum, who co wrote it, also Academy nominated. Um, we got Robbie and um, Gosling, also Academy nominated actors and actresses. I know. Um, Margot Robbie was in the Academy Award winning Suicide Squad. Did that really win an Oscar? Jesus, God. Has the Academy stooped so low? It has. I think it won like a hey. special effects Oscar or something like that. Uh, it was a costume design one. That's right. Uh, okay. Th- those don't count. Those are pity. Hey, Dan, wasn't that like old lady at the bus stop? Wasn't she like a cameo or something? Ah, she here we was... go. She is played by an Oscar winning costume designer. Yeah. A lot of people assume that she was braced on Barbara Hendon, I think her name was. The actual Barbie, but it's not her. Yeah. Mm. Oh, if she was bar, if she was the actual Barbie, she'd be German and a prostitute. Fun fact, guys. Stop so- stealing Dan's bit. Dan, do you know about Lily Bind? Sort of. Not really. Yeah, I mean, kind of. The name does sound familiar when I was looking up my stuff. No. Hmm. Well, someone posted something on the internet. One of those, like, reactionary, like, Barbie's a girl, you know, toy for girls, so of course men turned into a sex doll. So I did a little digging into this. So in the 19... You have two minutes and 43 seconds. Go. 1950s, there was a, and still there's a German magazine called Bind. It's kind of like, um, Mad Magazine, only with boobs in it sometimes. Uh, And they had a comic strip in it back in the 50s, called Lily, about a German call girl. She was blonde, she was stylish, she was snarky, she wore pretty clothes and all the styles. And as a gag gift, the magazine Bind had dolls called Lily Bins, which they would sell at flower shops with the tagline, you know, why buy your wife a flower when you can buy her a lily? And you could dress up the doll, and it was really fun. Men liked to get it, and they used to like to get it for their little girls. It was a popular toy amongst girls, because also you could buy separate clothes for it. 
And then one day, I can't remember her name, uh, but the, the woman that would eventually go on to air quotes make Barbie was looking for a new toy. And her and her husband were in Germany and they saw Lily Bind and they bought a few and took it back to America and they made their own Lily Bind and they called it Barbie. And that first Barbie was tip to toe a Lily. And then 20 years later, they bought the Lily brand from Bind so they wouldn't have to worry about being sued. Which, I mean, just amazing stuff to consider Barbie literally can be any career, including the oldest career. Did you know that scene in Lord of the Rings when Aragorn kicks the skull, he actually broke his toe? Yes, Josh, we know that. <laughs> what does that Even have to do said, yes. with this film? <laughs> I don't know. When Tom was talking, that's all I could think about. Mine's more interesting. Yeah. <laughs> See? Hook had a boo box. Do you remember that? No. I haven't seen a hook since I was nine. And technically, I never saw it all the way through. I was sick. I love that movie. So they're just going to let strange adults just wander into the high school? You can definitely tell this they're, isn't quote-unquote the real world. No, they're pretty white people. Of course it's Oh, like yeah, that's right. Josh is right. This is L.A. and they're white, so... Hey, it's a bunch of brats! Tom says the same thing. Only mine's true. So, Dan, do you have any trivia about these four girls? No. Or those pants. I want those pants. How does she tighten them? Yes. Um, edit this out. Just edit all of it, please. Like, there's not a, like, a loop. Is it tucked in? Edit it. <laughs> and do you think they loosen it to prevent a muffin top? Tom, edit Dan, that out. Dan has left the chat. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So horrible. The worst phase. Check. 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 Basic bitch Barbie, right, Tom? Yes, basic bitch Barbie. Kids are not this clever. <laughs> they are when Greta Gerwig <laughs> writes their dialogue. <laughs> No, they're just reading what, like, 40-year-old men write on Reddit. <laughs> Seriously, how does the pants tighten? Are they, like, elastic? <laughs> Josh is going down a rabbit hole now. I'm going to Google this. How do, how do, like, Barbie's pants. I, how to get into Barbie's pants in the movie. The fuck is this? What Dan? Why is this website you run? What? Cow 
girl. Oh, that was a weird Google. <laughs> Wrangler Barbie edition. What? We can definitely not have this episode at the rate Josh is going here. Hang on. Why do these pants have buckles? I need just only laces. I know it sucks, Ken. It sucks. Then he goes to school, gets in a mountain of debt, and still can't do anything because he has no experience. What a beach hole. I regret all of this now, Dan. Okay, I can't get Barbie's <laughs> high heels. I want her cowgirl pants. I have some friends here in Columbus that can loan you theirs. I'm oh not shopping god. on Etsy. Oh my god. Last time I shopped on Etsy, I had to get on penicillin for a week. Oh my god, we're not even 45 minutes in. We're only 45 minutes in. We still have, oh dear God, a whole hour. Those are not the same jeans. They have like a fly. Oh my God. It never stops. Listeners just, going, this, meanwhile. This commentary we're... episode's just a stream of Josh consciousness. It's like, it's like watching a cat with a laser beam. <laughs> The commentary episode air quotes. <clears throat> With reality defying pants, apparently. Well, she is coming from the world of. Oh, wait, th she got those world. Yeah, she got those in LA. Well, clearly, LA plants are designed. Plants. LA pants are designed for plastic people. That makes so much sense, Tom. Also explains why the world, you know, the Portal 2 Barbie world ends up in LA. Plastic people going to a plastic city. It just holy shit. That so explains many layers. so much. The layers. You know, keep pouring. See that one dude sitting down because reasons. What reasons would those be, Josh? Don't answer that question, Josh. <gasps> nope. <laughs> do, 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 do. Technical difficulties. He has a giant erection. Where would they put Ken? I mean, they're going to put Barbie in the box. Where are they going to put Ken? <laughs> oh, I know who that is, actually. So. Oh, go. Dan was going to say something. Say it, Dan. Hold on. Ouch. So, the whole Ken isn't something we're worried about was actually said to Ryan Gosling when he was asking during the production of this movie. He was talking to Mattel, and he was privately trying to create some Ken-related merchandise for the crew. Yeah. He had, to, he had to obtain special permission from Mattel. 
And Mattel yeah. replied that they're not allowed to make Barbie merch, but Ken merchandise was fine because Ken isn't something we're worried about. And <laughs> they were not anticipating his character's popularity in this film. So it ended up biting him in the ass, which is why they had to make like the Ken Uff t-shirts yeah. hoodies, and the Ken fanny packs and stuff like that. Yeah. So they didn't think he'd be Ken Uff. Something like that. Like the CEO straight up said, Ken, this is something we're worried about. <laughs> like they don't really pay that much attention to him because he's literally a, they consider Ken a Barbie accessory. Right. <laughs> and fast forward a year, a- not more than a year after and Ken's stuff is everywhere. Well, Anna just, got uh, me- six months later, the actor is being nominated for best uh, supporting actor. He had a musical number and everything. Seriously, how does she get in and out of her pants? Josh is uh, getting a whole different takeaways from this movie than we are. This is like unrealistic body types because... I think he's focusing on the wrong things here. I like, to, <laughs> I like to think that the real world is the real world until a Barbie and or Ken come in and then it just becomes this kind of exaggerated real world. But yeah, no one really this, notices. Yeah, like with this complete with this Scooby Doo chase. Com- Scooby Doo chase and the, you know, just weird color palettes that you really don't see. Like hyper monochromatic. And strange rooms that lead into... Yeah, because I'm sure these are real things Mattel headquarters actually had. What what the hell do I know? These pants aren't the same. You could see the laces where they tie it up. No, I'm going to... I'm not paying $60 for something that isn't movie accurate. I'm going to... I'm going to go get a snack. I'm still hungry. I'm going to join you. (laughs) What... What Isn't that Ron line Perlman's I wife? That is Ron Perlman's wife. Well, th- She's married to Hellboy. Actually, that's Rita Perlman, and I think she was married to Danny No, DeVito. Danny DeVito. Yeah. Yeah, she's married to Danny DeVito. Was. I think they're divorced. She was on Cheers. She was. That's where she met not Danny DeVito, because Danny DeVito was not on Cheers. Has she really done anything else since Cheers? No, they've been married since 1982. Oh, so they're still together. Oh, good on them. You look less German. And prostitute No, the prostitute is still about the same. Whores. <laughs> Thank you, Josh. So anyway, start blasting. <laughs> Is anyone else's audio just a little bit off? Mine's not. I'm afraid to touch it. Yeah, same. That's what she said. Stop it. I knew you were going to say that. I thought against saying that sentence. I went with it anyways because I thought, incorrectly, you might behave yourself for one line. (laughs) Dan, we both should have known better. (laughs) I know. It's actually, it's my fault. Yeah, that's always your fault. By the way, Rhea Perlman and Danny DeVito met on Taxi. Really? Okay. Because I knew Danny was on Taxi, but I didn't know she was on there too. That's what she said? 
Yeah, I mean, she's literally saying it right now. Yeah. Thud. Did you see that Chevy uh, product placement? Yes. GM's got their hands in Transformers and Barbie. That came out wrong. Tom, edit that out. I'm 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 done telling him now. <laughs> this opens up a lot of nightmare implications that a Barbie's everything can be impacted by what their kid is going through in the real world. Just so many terrifying things. And also, if that's the case, then there should have been so many more Barbies in Barbie land that were missing heads. Unless I was just Barbie land LA. What would Barbie Land Midwest look like? Just Barbie heads. There's no <laughs> bodies. Rivers full of Barbie corpses, all headless. Okay, so I found some pants, but they're like spandex. Those are not movie accurate. Dan, please get back here quick. I'm I'm still here. I can't leave. <laughs> This. Did she just turn on lane keep assist? Is that all she did? Yes, pretty much. Okay. Much like how G.I. Joe inspired me to join the military. Apparently Tom Cruise got punched out one time because Top Gun made him want to, uh, somebody want to like join the Navy. I think I heard that trivia on the Fire Pit podcast. Well, if it's on the Fire Pit podcast, it's got to be true. Those guys know what they're talking about. (laughs) No, they don't. There's way too many sex-related jokes for my tastes. So, do you think uh, Chevrolet sponsored this film? I don't know. They figured they got Transformers, why not? actually kind of makes sense. I mean, one of the biggest selling success accessories ever was the mm-hmm. Barbie Corvette. Okay, so now I'm going to call back to last week's episode, last month's episode. Yes. They're not actually going to Barbie land. They're going to go writhing on the beach. (laughs) They're going to be lying there next to the corpses of the Gemini Holograms girls. That landed there eight years prior? Yeah. That would be a better movie than the one actual Gemini Holograms. Also, if the portal to Barbie land is right there... How is there not more crossover? They didn't have the yellow rollerblades or the uh, asbestos snow. Uh, so it's like um, it's um, a Wizard of Oz thing. You have to have the shoes and you have to believe in it. Yes. And also a giant tornado helps. Wait a minute. I mean, that's a Kansas thing. That's that, yeah, If you want yeah. to get to Barbie land in Kansas... Then you got to do the tornado. In L.A., you just got to do cocaine. And yellow rollerblades. And yellow rollerblades. Yeah, we got, obviously, the two together do the thing. Hmm. What? Have you ever referenced a random person as a tween, Dan? No. Okay. 
I think Dan's broke. No, I just said I wouldn't have done it. I'm just no, saying I'm he's not talking as much. <laughs> I'm tuning you out. <laughs> because Tom can't edit this episode. <laughs> I feel like the director was just like, just hold the weight above <laughs> your head. <laughs> like like this? Yeah, just hold it. For how long? Shut up and be eye candy. Yeah, but really, this is... I mean, it's not much weight, but it's kind of heavy. Oh, we've just walked into a Top Gun set. It did get awfully homo. Wait, Tom, edit that out. Josh is going to have a lot of rude awakenings. Ah! That's John Cena! I don't see him. I can't see him! Oh, and now I've... Oh, I'm I'm glipping. Just let let it go. I don't don't want to pause it and try to fix it so you could catch up. Yeah, so the... Cena being the mermaid Ken was because Cena really wanted to be a part of this movie and like basically said, I will do any role you ask me to do. And Greta Gerwig's like, you want to be a mermaid? He goes, yes, <laughs> I will absolutely be a mermaid. That is awesome. Do you guys ever watch Ricky Stanicki? No. That's the one. That's the movie where John Cena dressed up like Britney Spears. I know of the movie, but I probably would have been funnier back in like two thousand eight. I just asked your question, Tom. Where did the Ken stay? She was like, I don't know. <laughs> that's why they say hung like a horse. I'm not. I'm just not going to interact with Josh from here on out. It just encourages him. <laughs> He's not going to learn unless we stop. I want that coat. How does she take off her pants? Okay, and we're back on that now. Okay, you know what? No, no, no. Magic. Because they magically changed. Even the tween said something about that when they magically changed outfits. That's the only way to get out of those pants. The only way to get into Barbie's pants is magic. It does. See? Casa House. (laughs) I, him mentioning it was the least creepy way possible makes it so, so much, much better. better. So much better. I mean, these are all pretty good arrangements here. Get your stuff for school tomorrow. I don't feel like I have anything to say here. (laughs) We're all just watching this and nodding (laughs) along. Yes. Yes. (laughs) 
<laughs> also, butterflies playing in the background. Mortal Kombat 2. I just watched that movie on Netflix. Well, the Mortal Kombat. Do you know they just film, finished filming the sequel? Wait, what? Whoa. What? Josh just says whatever comes to his head. It's just... I'm, I'm getting concussed. Like, like, Dan, did you hear who they got to play Johnny Cage? Yeah, Carl Urban. Carl Urban. I thought Carl Urban was dead. He's Wait, still what? in The Boys. <laughs> oh, no. oh, dear God. Okay. The Forrest never... Kelly died, but the other Bones is fine. I was thinking Carl Weathers. He did die. He did die. R.I.P. Apollo Creed. Timing. It's about time. They, we needed that Nobel Prize. He looks familiar. He's not Freddie Prince Jr., but he's Freddie Prince Jr. adjacent. I feel like if we say anything for the next like 30 to 40 minutes, we're going to get canceled. <laughs> Considering everything we've said for the past hour, Josh, I think that's already happened. Ken just wants to be I feel like I don't want to live in Barbie land, but I don't want to live in Ken land either. I don't want to live in the real world either, so... Yeah, we're just guess stuck the only in Ohio. Recourse... Oh, God. I have to kill myself. It's the only way, guys. Oh, who wants some Kool-Aid? Pink Kool-Aid or... I was thinking lemonade. I, I was thinking pink lemonade. And as I said it, it just came out wrong. So. You've never. That's not happened at all. Say that joke again, but don't say Kool Aid. Say lemonade. No. Damn it. I feel you, Barbie. I feel you. Can I have My the friends Palazzo are assholes too. You think Barbie's despair that a bunch of men in suits ruined her dreamland is the same way like Marvel fans feel right now about the MCU? It's basically a documentary at this <laughs> point. Okay. This entire movie is a metaphor for the MCU. <laughs> and probably Star Wars. Yes. Specifically Star Wars. I mean... We've got horses here. They had horses there. <laughs> like Barbie is Luke Skywalker slash Mark Hamill. Will Ferrell is Kathleen Kennedy. Yep, I see it. It lines up perfectly. And instead of the Barbie dream house, it's The Last Jedi. 
And Margot Robbie is all the Star Wars fans. No, 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 that's her. Because, I mean, liter- her name is literally America. Fuck yeah. Her daughter can be the international fans, but... Yeah, but, but no one like no one cares about them. No. At least until 2000, you know, 15. And then that's all we cater, cater to. That's about probably when this actress was born, too. The metaphor is just perfect. And the green artificial grass represents, like, the box office from, like, 1977 or something? I don't know. Dan, anything to add to this? No. You both are idiots. (laughs) (laughs) They said Instagram instead of TikTok because the Chinese... (laughs) <laughs> That's funny because Greta Gerwig wrote that. No, wait, no, I'm thinking of um, not that. Never mind. Because well, like, Jane back. Austen wrote that like a million years ago. With the help of Greta Gerwig, everyone knows this. See, and that's a callback to when Greta Gerwig directed the Ghostbusters 2016. No, she said ugly. Yeah, well, she said ugly and unwanted. That's a callback to Kristen Wiig's career. <laughs> that's Kate McKinnon. Both are applicable in this sentence. I hate that movie so much. Sometimes you only can just do nothing but sing and hope the bombs drop swiftly. <laughs> like the, 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 will, will the first I episode will. of Fallout, you know, some people are all like, this sucks. Oh, that's disparaging. A lot of people are also like, please. It's like we're back in Cold War America. Also, I kind of noticed that Barbie Land kind of looks like the Fallout world before the bombs drop. Kind of does. Hmm. Makes you think, guys. So is the Barbie movie shared universe with Fallout and Who Framed Roger Rabbit? And Oppenheimer. Ooh, hear me out. The area where Barbie Land is, is Alameda, where they tested the atomic bombs. Okay. Okay. I'm following. I'm yeah, following. With, you know, with Oppenheimer. And that's what opened the portal into okay. Okay. Barbie land. And when the inevitable fallout universe atomic war happens, it just explodes both worlds together into this chaotic everything. You know what? I, I see nothing wrong with your logic. Dan agrees. Cinematic yeah. universe. The Metaphor. BCU. Repeat that once more, Nigel. The BCU. The BCU, the Barbie Cinematic Universe. Oh, wait, no. The Mattel Cinematic U- The MCU. That's what oh, we can call it. Oh, my God. We're doing it, guys. We're bringing it here. But, but you could do a play on the C and say MCU. <gasps> oh, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Dude, they're going to love us on the internet. <laughs> Dude, I know. I can't wait to hear the reviews after this. We thought our last episode was popular. Oh, shit. (laughs) Poor Michael Sarah. America Ferreira just turned 40. Really? She doesn't look a day over 52. Tom, edit that out. (laughs) 
Dude, I mean, she's not wrong. The metaphors. I wonder if this movie's trying to say something. Yeah, I think there's a message hidden somewhere. Somewhere. Hmm. I feel like it has something to do with the patriarchy. Mm. Mm, in what way, though? I don't know. That just doesn't feel like it's enough. <laughs> or you have brothers. That, and that could be taken out of context. Also, yes. I remember the, I remember magic earring Ken. <laughs> well, but I no mean one, like no. No. No, Josh. Let's not let's not think you, let's not finish any of that. But, let's not finish any of that, Josh. We yeah, don't need. We don't need it. <laughs> webcam Barbie is no one's dream, and we're sticking with that. We could do it doggy style, so we could both watch X Files. Come on, get horny now. Dana, dana, dana. <laughs> I do like Helen Mirren and yeah. like the the little bit of the the Stark yeah. they do poke at themselves. Here. Yes. Like I said, I never understood the backlash this movie got. Like, it just well, I understand some of it, but like, no, because I mean, it's I, a f- <laughs> go ahead. Okay, man. let me say, I, I don't want to say. Let me preface this by saying, I understand <laughs> disclaimer. I yeah, I, no, because see, well, someone's going to take it out of context. Like, oh, Dan understands the backlash because he agrees with it. No, 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 I disagreed with all of the backlash this movie got because I feel like people who really just hated on it were just like, mm-hmm. gotta miss the point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Of the movie. No, it's because it is a female-centric movie that made boatloads of money, and men don't like that. Well, I think a lot of it is it's air quotes attempts at some kind of message, which I can see the arguments against the film in that regard, because it does try to have a message. It just also doesn't want... It's weird. It's weird how it's it's trying to have its cake and eat it too. It's it's very clumsy. The message is very ham-fisted and inelegant, but while trying to also not be at the forefront and it just makes a mess of things. So in an editorial sort of film critique fashion, you can still point out that I mean this whole monologue, we're at the monologue scene about, you know, cognitive dissonance, you know, such a man thing to say but again it's like it we we're going to our favorite film that we have seen on this podcast but never aired josie and the pussycats that movie had an anti-capitalist message for sure anti-consumerist while also still poking fun at it but it didn't need a monologue like this to you know just in case you're not paying attention at home yeah just in case you don't get the point yeah. Just, just so in I case can... you don't get the point, here it is. Here I am to hammer it into your head a little more. Yeah. So I just need the... a horror to look into the camera and be like, an alternate reality. Exactly. Exactly. But so I can understand the criticisms of the film for being ham fisted like that. But this is a well, this is still a good film. It's not. Th- to the our hate... female listeners, I apologize for us, mostly Dan. Yes, Dan's the one at fault here in this episode. But I agree with what you're saying, Dan. The um the internet rage against this film a bit much. It was just a bit much. Flipping my chair back. For real talk though, no, I like I see where they could get their criticisms. <laughs> Like, I, I agree with you, Dan. It's like, after walking out of there, it's just all like, I see why they're gri- they're bitching. I don't agree with it, but I see where they're coming from. Or I mean, that's I see, what under- I was trying to say. Yeah, yeah. I, was, I was like, I un- like 
And also, if you take some of these scenes out of context, yes, it sounds like it's all, you know, patriarchy bad, which it is. And, uh, you know, if only women ran things, everything would be better. Mm-hmm, no, mm-hmm. that's not what they're saying in this movie. That is not the message of this movie. No. Go ahead, Dan. No. Mansplain it for me. Yes. No, I'm not mansplaining anything. <laughs> yeah. Hey, are you wearing a baseball cap right now? Because if you are, you need to flip it backwards and talk reels to us. Well, no, I'm just saying, like, the reason why the Kens, quote unquote, revolt is because in the Barbie world, they're literally nothing but accessories. They don't have a mm-hmm. purpose in life. They have no they have no purpose in life other than be other than to be an accessory to Barbie, which is why when they're given a sense of some kind of purpose, they revolt against that. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like it's mm-hmm, mm-hmm. like she even says when they, when they, when she takes the other girls into the Barbie world, they're like, where do the Kens go? And she's like, you know what? I don't really know. Like but they don't. also just like me. me. Hey, I yeah. don't know. Let's move on. Yeah. And there is something that could be said too about, I mean, you see how the Barbies are just like all willing to be like, Oh yeah, you know what? I don't need to be president. I don't need to be an ambulance driver or a doctor. I could just be chill. Yeah. I mean, it could be something I'd said, like, when my whole identity is my job, what is my identity? What is the me Barbie? Could have been like, maybe I just want to hang out and have brewski beers. It could have opened up so many avenues. Like, at the end, like, everything's restored and the president be like, actually, I don't want to be president. You could be president. I kind of just want to be like, I want to be a bartender, Barbie. I like handing out brewskis and just watching sp- sports. Again, now we're nitpicking the film before it's even done. Oh my god, me and Tom have had that exact same interaction. That's how we became friends. Yes. That's what Dan said to me when we first met. (laughs) Oh, sweetie, you're so cute. Confused. But, you know, that's what you heard. actually kind of a sweet moment right there i know what they were trying to go with but it was a sweet moment like oh but you can't see now that was a fight club reference don't watch ghostbusters 2016 And here Dan is not, said. yeah, Dan is not disagreeing with any of that. Oh, He's God, on the internet no. I arguing. Hate I hate that film. Yeah, if anyone, if any movie deserved the outrage it got on the internet, Ghostbust, that Ghostbusters deserved it. Yeah, like. And should also. We, should we shame the women that were in the Ghostbusters film because of what they look like or the fact that they were women? No. Absolutely not. That's disgusting. Should we shame them for making that movie in the first place and the fact that collectively all four of them were not funny? Yes. Yes. Forever shame. All the shame. Oh, they have a Kate Bishop costume on eBay. Oh, my God. Who's Kate Bishop? Not Hawkeye. Oh, Talk about the MCU. 
and not the M she you. The Mattel Cinematic Universe. <laughs> On purpose. <laughs> That's how everybody who has ever played Wonderwall does it. They play it at you, not for you. Can confirm. <laughs> Say, I don't know if I've ever been good enough. A little bit of stealing a thing. This song is about a dude who was in an abusive relationship. Yes. See, again, and there's tiny he, layers. He was the one being abused. Mm-hmm. So, of course, Lady Twitter took this scene very differently. Yeah. See, this movie offended both sides oh, of Twitter. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> it was the largest coming together of America I've seen since post-9-11. <laughs> 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 Movie's canceled now. We're buffering. At least I'm buffering. Fellas, how we doing? Yeah, I'm I'm still watching it. Mine keeps bouncing back and forth. Yep. It guy it's 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 abusing me with the abuse song in the abusive relationship yeah. of the abused town. <laughs> I love the one drummer, Ken. That's about right. World full of guitarists. Yeah. The only difference only between this drummer. and actual LA is they'd all be playing Wonderwall. <laughs> they couldn't afford the royalties. But everybody there knows how to play it. Actually, like Tom said, <laughs> I kind of get the subtlety why they're playing Push. Mm -hmm. Because again, it's a song that's about a man in an abusive relationship being the one who's abused. Which kind of describes the Kens in Barbie World before they take over. Oh my mm -hmm. god. <laughs> no wonder why this Is this movie, movie secretly on the side of the Kens? I think it's on I think it's on the side of both. It's on the side of common sense, and that's why it pissed off so many people. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you compare this movie to Roots... <laughs> we are not comparing whoa, this whoa. movie to Roots! Whoa, whoa. whoa Josh! Whoa. Okay. Okay. Tom, edit that out. <laughs> I can't! <laughs> just, just make a long, silent gap at this point. Because we are not going there. <laughs> that, that is... That is a forbidden zone. <laughs> we, <laughs> outsiders are not permitted to go there. That's why I stopped talking. The because first time is, this whole forbidden. episode. <laughs> I'm like, I came right up to the line. And I like teased it with my toe. And you realized... Step back, back, <laughs> back. <laughs> Just, no. no. Not so much a, a tender step back as Tom and Dan grabbing me by the throat and pulling me. Yeah. <laughs> Speak. Shh, shh. Our president is speaking now. <laughs> I keep forgetting to add this song to my karaoke list. Go ahead, Tom. Sing your heart out. 
Dan, you too. No. <laughs> we all know the chorus. I was told there'd be no singing. <laughs> it's the second epi- musical episode. I'm just Ken. Anywhere else I'd be a 10. Making sure this episode gets demonetized so we don't get canceled. I'm just And I can- want you to look at my deep inside my beach hole. But please I'm, I'm, don't hold this against us. It's Josh's thing. Beach holes. Okay, so uh, this scene here, uh, yes. they were under strict instructions for the beach fight. Absolutely under no circumstances, no real weapons. So they weren't allowed to use any real weapons. No guns, swords, anything like that. Uh, that is because Mattel has a standing policy that no Barbie or Ken doll can ever have a weapon as an accessory. Now that just makes it, it makes this whole scene even better. In fact, I don't know. It, it went so far as to when the Star Trek Barbie and Ken were released a few years ago for one of Star Trek's anniversaries, they didn't come with a phaser. Really? So, Dan, yeah. quick question. What? Why do they have bows and arrows? I don't know. Well, but I, well maybe. Yep. Those, those are real weapons, and they've murdered millions like, of people but, through history. Right, but what I was looking I'm up is like. poking holes in your. Uh, your fact, sorry. They're plunger bow and arrows. Yeah, they are plunger bow and arrows. They're not using actual arrow arrows. Well, then it would have. Are they, yeah, did they see, have plan on actually packing was, real guns in the Kindles? That, that was the joke, though, right there when he says, Are there real weapons here? And he goes, No. <laughs> like. <laughs> okay, let's just be honest. They're... Ryan Is Gosling's that... abs are the real weapon there. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Everything else in this movie is plastic, but those abs, 100%. Care Bear stare. It was like a command. They're crossing the streams. You don't cross the streams. They just came. (laughs) That was the joke. In the box. We need a Shang-Chi, too. Meanwhile, people... Do we? The first one was good. I'm just afraid the sequel won't live up to the original. I just think the first one was good because Phase 4 was so bad. It was the first movie in Phase 4. We didn't know how bad Phase 4 was going to get. Well, we know now. (laughs) Yeah, and that's why it's still one of the best things out of Phase 4. Okay, I'll take that back. Shang-Chi is very average, but compared to the rest of Phase 4, it was pretty good. Oh, yeah, it doesn't hold a light to, like... If it was in Phase 1, it would probably be, like, the bottom of Phase 1. Like, it's not even as good as Thor 1, you know what I mean? So... So, at this point, people going in to see Oppenheimer and went into the wrong theater are so (laughs) absolutely confused. Any minute now that... I thought this was about atomic bombs. (laughs) Not atomic blondes. (laughs) hey yo. Hey Also, his his belt is not on the gig line, and that is bothering the hell out of me. Well, at least he could pull his pants up. <laughs> like, did you see Barbie's cowgirl pants? Oh my god! <laughs> like, how did they get up? And how did she come up? Magic. We already established they came off through magic. But how did yes. she put them on? Magic! It's everything's magic. She was in the real world. Whenever she put them on, Tom. So I vote that we never do this again. (laughs) This is our one and only full watch episode. Abs. Abs. So it's like real world America. (laughs) (laughs) 
Hooray! We're still the dominant force. Democracy. Apartheid is retained in Barbie land. Oh shit! Tom saying that's, the quiet that's, part that's out loud. Dan, Dan, Tom, Dan, he's 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 trying to t- tease the line again. Yeah, let's pull him back. Yeah, come on, back. Tom. Come on. That was your one. So I got excited here. Yes. Oh, gasp. <coughs> that brings up a very important point. Which Where's is? Samuel Jackson in this movie? What? <laughs> Well, motherfucker was spoken, and Samuel Jackson was nowhere around. Uh. Would would Samuel Jackson be a Ken or a Barbie? Yes. That was the right answer. <laughs> You know what I don't get? How Wrangler has a Barbie collection, but they don't sell the same pants from the movie. Oh, my God. On behalf of the fire pit, I apologize. (laughs) In the middle of our street... Okay, I'll allow that one because that's a good that's a good one, Josh. I'll allow it. Thank you, Tom. You're welcome. That's the only one. Man, they just keep beating to death that joke. It's like, for crying out loud, stop. It's annoying. I'm slowly glaring at you, Josh. You are not your khakis. You're not your fucking khakis. God damn it, Tom. You beat me to it. You beat me to it. <laughs> Son of a... Dan had the right idea. He's just being quiet through this whole thing. Because Josh won't stop with the dance. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 
Ken Esmeen. His name is Robert Paulson. Paulson. His name is Robert Paulson. <laughs> and he had bitch tits. Bitch tits Ken. His name is Robert Paulson. His name is Robert Paulson. Dan, say it with us. His, His name, name is, is Robert, Robert Paulson. Paulson. His, name His name is, is Robert, Robert Paulson. Paulson. <laughs> Good work, guys. Metaphor. <laughs> <laughs> I've been here the whole time, guys. I'm Will Ferrell. Do you remember me from other movies, such as Elf, as directed by John Favreau? He kicked off the MCU. Never forget. Bad touch. <laughs> bad touch. Bad touch. I thought all company retreats were just epic tickle fights. I've never been on one, but that's what I've heard. I mean, it tracks. I mean, they are in L.A. <coughs> Very real. Very real. She-E-O. That was just me doing a Sean Connery impression. Shut up, Alan. <laughs> She's like the Tom of Barbie World. Oh. Um. Oh. <laughs> you know what, Josh? I will edit this episode now. <laughs> Even Dan's not touching that one with the 10 foot No, no, no. <laughs> we are leaving that alone. We are going <laughs> to... Yeah. That's a big old don't feed the bear son. <laughs> I love you, Tom. Just wait till I'm done with the edits, Josh. Okay, I don't want spandex pants. Oh, for fuck's sake, he's still looking them up. Oh. You're a whore. No, you're a dirty German whore. Oh my God! Oh no! Oh no! No no no! Both of you stop it right now. <laughs> Dan no. formally resigns from the fire pit podcast. <laughs> Your original name was Lily. I smugged you in from West no. Berlin. My fucking coworkers listened to this. Absolutely not. <laughs> My parents just found this podcast. They're going to love this episode. Your parents can't fire you while you're trying to buy a new car. Going to what now? Yes. Um, I'm going to let you guys finish the movie. I'm going to go tuck my kids in. Don't say oh, anything. no, you do not get to run away from this movie, Josh. You I'm running do... away from this movie now, Tom. Fine, I'm go tuck your kids. down so I can't hear you bitch at me. Yeah. Bye.
Okay, Josh is gone. We can talk shit about him this whole time. We're waving. Josh is leaving as they're waving goodbye to Barbie. <laughs> Josh was the Barbie all along. Maybe the real, maybe the real Josh was the friends we made along the way. It was not. I have that same hoodie. Goodbye. I kind of wish I was wearing my Knuff hoodie. Then again, it's like 90 degrees in here. You're a pretty blonde white chick in L.A. You're going to be fine. Was I ever Barbie? Nope, never mind. I'm out back to Barbie land. <laughs> Functionally immortal. <clears throat> you have renal failure. Your kidneys will die. Your grandkids will stop calling you except when they need money and to check to make sure you're still in the will. You really sure about this, Bobby? Jesus Christ, she's still talking? <laughs> she's really oh, trying to get Barbie to not do this whole real world thing. Oh, um, darling. <laughs> uh... Um. Did Dan sign off yet? Did he yes. just, like, quit? I'm gone. I'm done. <laughs> it happened when I was 13. I woke up, and it was just there. Like, what happens if I touch it? Please do not go any further with this, Josh. <laughs> yeah, we have been treading very dangerous <laughs> waters for the last half hour of this film. Like, very dangerous waters. Like, there's piranhas, and there's already blood in the water. And now someone's throwing in sharks. <laughs> Breathe in deeper. Stand by. This song won an Emmy. And by Emmy, I mean, Emmy, I mean, like, whatever the music equivalent of an Emmy is. But did this win the Academy? I can't remember. I have production on this. <clears throat> Do you think they stole all these videos like they stole the ones from, like, Jim and the Holograms? Not quite like how they stole them in Jim and the Holograms. <laughs> it's a little different. <laughs> yeah. To our listeners, I want to formally apologize for ruining Barbie for every one of you. And to our listeners, Dan and I apologize for Josh for ruining Fire Pit for everyone. <laughs> 99 episodes, guys. We did it. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Driving in a Chevy. Thank you, Helen Miriam. <clears throat> Wait a second. So, how does Barbie get into the real world and get a job right away? But she doesn't have any qualifications. But Ken couldn't get a job right away because he didn't have any qualifications. But the movie was about the patriarchy? Tits. Did it specify that she got a job? Yes. Because, yeah, I mean, literally women interview. can sorry, get a yeah, job. She's, she's going into, I forgot, she's going into an interview. That's right. No, she's not. She's going into the gynecologist. Yeah, because that's the joke. It sets up like she's going in for a job interview. Okay. When I rewatched this the other night, I may have tuned out in the last couple of minutes. See, everyone in the office, in the everyone burst out on that line. Right. Hey, it's Lily. Which one? That the one in the middle. Technically, all the other ones too, but the one in the middle was the original Lily, with the black and white um, one piece bathing suit. Oh, that's like the original Barbie outfit too. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah. We'll go with that, right, Tom? Yeah. I do love that uh, Mattel allowed their uh, weirder um, accessory decisions uh, to be poked fun of here. They definitely, they definitely, you know, did a good job of poking fun at themselves. They did. They really yeah. did. I mean... They were still aware of the hand that was feeding them, so they didn't bite too hard. But they allowed a little playful nibbles. Is that the full house, Skipper? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Cocaine sold separately. Don't watch Bob Saget stand up. I'm sorry, this remake of this song is even worse than the original version. Well, they couldn't get the rights to use the original one, so... How could they not get the rights? What is Aqua <clears throat> doing? <laughs> I Honestly, I could be wrong here, but I think it's cheaper to get a uh, remix of a song because you're not licensing the whole isn't song. This, isn't this Nicki Minaj singing this remake? She can't be cheap. I don't know. I mean, it, keep yeah. in mind, the MCU... Did uh, the Whitney Houston like song in the beginning of No Way Home? That cost a hundred thousand dollars, and they did it for a throwaway joke. You said MCU. <laughs> <laughs> like, you said it without even like correcting yourself. I mean MCU. All right, gentlemen, that that was our commentary for the Barbies. Yes, it was, and for those listener that have stuck through with us through the end singular singular it, let's just admit it it's me i'm the only one who made it to the end because i love my jokes dan and i are not disagreeing with this they love my jokes too <laughs> no <we don't. laughs> so until next time i've been tom i've been dan and i've been josh don't stop the podcast unless you don't want to listen to us anymore wait okay. did that come out right i don't care <laughs> thanks for listening <laughs> this has been a production of curtain call entertainment llc yay <laughs> we did something we did something it's hilarious <laughs> good luck out there Yes, Wait. all of it. Are we watching Keep the movie again? Keep it under 20 again? minutes. Gosh, stop, the movie's playing again. Oh, no. You promised. Oh, God, it is. Stop. <laughs>